I fly halfway around the world and an odd note is waiting for me in my hotel room. It says to come to the bridge down by the river. This looks like the place. I could really go for some Wiener Schnitzel after the long walk out here. I am supposed to meet someone down here. Have you seen anyone? Do you have any whiskey? Are you sure you have not seen anyone? <laughs> I'm glad Chuck is dead. Ruined my life. Wake up, sir. I have to go. Sleep well. completed step three of the note. Now for step four. So tell me again why you're here. I was assigned to the case by the home office in Albuquerque. There is no home office in Albuquerque. It's neat to know. Look, I like working a case alone. I especially don't need some junior agent messing up my investigation. Especially some junior agent that thinks I don't know there isn't a home office in Albuquerque. So stay out of my way. Take a lot of notes, sit back and learn, and I'll wrap up this case and we can both get the hell out of here. Your reputation certainly precedes you, Agent Ray. I'll take that as a compliment, Agent Reyes. It's how it was intended. I'm sure it was. Let's photograph the victim and head into town to talk to the local sheriff. The body is starting to pixelate. Body starting to pixelate. This is going to be a long night. Happy to help. Smile! Now we can head into town and find the local sheriff. It's covered by the underbrush, but it's an old abandoned chainsaw. That old tree is blocking the great entrance. What was that? Violin music coming from the sewer? It's pretty rusty and totally out of chainsaw gas. Signals are very strong tonight. What signals? The signals. Signals are very strong tonight. Yes, you already said that, but what signals? <laughs> I'm just screwing with you. Dark night. 
Deserted road. Me in a giant pigeon costume? It was too good to pass up. But the signals are strong tonight. Very strong. You almost ran over a federal agent. That is a felony. Sorry about that. Like I said, the signals are very strong tonight. Do you know anything about the body by the bridge? Why is it whenever a dead body is found, suspicion always falls to the person dressed as a giant bird? It's in the cadet training manual. We don't know anything about a dead body, but the signals are strong tonight. Very strong. Why are you dressed like a giant pigeon? We're the Pigeon Brothers Plumbing. I'm Beth. That's my sister Emily. Hi there! Why brothers if you're sisters? Dad was expecting to have sons, and he was too cheap to have the van repainted. So we're just rolling with it till he's dead. Oh, soon. Shut up, Emily. This is really odd. Should I save my game? I wouldn't worry about it. The game was expertly designed to have no dead ends or death. Yet still be scary and have a sense of tension. You can feel safe exploring whatever you want. But I'd watch out for the signals. They can be very strong and disrupt the power grid. Nice chatting with you. I need to find the sheriff and solve a murder. Nice talking to you too. Squeak! Beep! Wait up, eager beaver. Howdy! I'm the Thimbleweed Park Sheriff. I don't remember calling the Federinos. That's what you are, Feds. Hard to miss the government issue suits. <laughs> Correct, sir. We are federal agents. Whoa! Hold your horse Reno's. No need to get snippy. Looks like you heard about our little murder Reno out by the bridge, huh? There is nothing little about murder, sir. <sighs> Ignore him. He's new. No sense in wasting everyone's time, Reno. This cutscene is certain to get long, and it's only gonna get longer. Let's find the coroner and uh, get you on your way. Wrestling starts at eight. I hope he's talking about on TV. The coroner is waiting for you in his office. Come see me when you're done. I apologize, Areno, for all the lights being off. We don't stay open as long as you city slick Areno do at night. Even for a murder? Especially for murder. That makes no sense. Are we authorized to shoot people Areno's? Howdy who, I'm the Thimbleweed Park Coroner. Welcome to the future who. Oh, these are the latest in crime fighting computers made by Pillowtronics Inc. This is all probably pretty advanced, even for the Fedahoos. Oh, do enlighten us. <laughs> I love your sarcastic humor, who, Agent Ray. It's not humor. <laughs> there you go again. We're interested in any help your computers can give us. They look marvelous. <sighs> yes, happy to explain. So happy to explain, who. Yeah, you might want to take notes. Already on it. Tell us about the Bloodtron 3000. This is the Bloodtron 3000. Put two bloody objects in and it will match the blood type, printing out a report to who. Tell us about the Fingertron 3000. Right, Areno, the Fingertron 3000. Insert a fingerprint registry of known criminals and a fingerprint from the murder weapon on fingerprint tape, and it will do a match-a-who. 
Oh, tell us about the Facetron 3000. The Facetron 3000. Or, as I like to call it. Let me guess. The Face Areno? <laughs> no, that's what the sheriff calls it. You city folk who crack me up. Just insert two pictures of an individual and it will verify a positive match. Aren't you the Sheriff Areno? Oh my, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, people say there is some resemblance around the eyes. But we're as different as peas of who's in a pot of who. Plus, the sheriff has that annoying areno he adds to everything. You'll never hear me doing that a who. Sure, whatever. Fascinating stuff. I think we've heard enough. This is all very impressive, sir. This should cut hours of our investigation. <sighs> Uh, go see the sheriff in his office for a full explanation of the amazing Arrestron 3000. I have some paperwork to do, a who. Oh, yeah, almost forgot. Uh, these Tron machines are fully voice activated, so if you need any information, just talk to them. It's like we're living in the futuristic year of 2017. I hate this town. Let's investigate these Tron machines, then go see the sheriff. It's empty. It's empty. There's a fingerprint kit here. Hello again, Agent Arenos. Hopefully the coroner fills you in on our state-of-the-art Areno computers. That's some very serious computing power you've got there. Yes, sir, Areno. It's all state-of-the-art computer Arenos from Pillowtronics. Absolutely infallible. You, I mean, the coroner said something about the Arrestron? Yes, the Arrestron 3000. The last step in a fully computerized Areno arrest. The final link in the chain of a guaranteed conviction Areno. Every detail Areno analyzed and verified by a computer. Moving on. Right. Uh, sorry, Areno. I, I get carried away sometimes. This is the big bad boy Areno you've been hearing about. The Arrestron 3000. Uh, just feed three reports from other Tron machines into this and it issues a 100% Areno valid arrest warrant. Yeah, these machines are the reason we need only one law enforcement officer Areno. Chuck said that computers will soon put us all out of work, allowing for a full life of luxury. Chuck? Sadly, Chuck passed away a few days ago. There was a big service out at the cemetery, Reno. Oh, the entire town showed up, which isn't surprising for the hero of Thimbleweed County. We'll talk more about Chuck later. I need to run a Reno and check on a disturbance call out at the old circus. Probably that stupid clown Reno again. Looks like we need to go talk to the rest of the weirdos that live in this town. We should split up. It will be faster. You cooling your heels in the local diner would also make things go faster. If we follow agency questioning protocols, this shouldn't take long. <sighs> Just don't mess anything up. I want to get out of here as fast as possible. Agreed. Just a bunch of files. There's a fingerprint book here. Just a bunch of files. Just a bunch of just a bunch of files. Just a bunch of files. No time to talk. We have to fix this slight leak. What caused the leak? Well, the Hydrotron's tube is obviously burned out. We could use a new one. A WC-67? Yeah, we're out of that size. Must have been the signals. Yes, the signals.
Welcome to the S&D Diner. Hey, just so you know, that article in the Thimbleweed Nickel about botulism was a smear job. So, what can I do for you, honey? I'm a federal agent. Know anything about the dead body? Not too much, just scuttlebutt from the morning breakfast crowd. And I don't want to get into trouble, especially with a crazy person like him. You're not talking about me, are you? Shut up, Dave. We're the feds, you can trust us. What else do you know? Okay, honey, but you didn't hear this from me. I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. He's got serial killer written all over him. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ransom the Jerk was the featured act at Stupendous Brother Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Big night tonight. Full house after my raunchiest Tonight Show appearance. I really got Johnny good, that little jackwad. It's his own fault for not being able to take a joke. I better get ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed idiots. I just need to fix my hair, put on my makeup and clown nose, and find my joke book. Ouch! That's tight, but it'll have to do! Glad I only have to wear it for a couple of hours. What the hell is this? The number of trailers parked outside my door, including mine. The number of stars over my makeup mirror. The number of kids that Carney Joe has. Must have written it when I was on a bender. It's an IOU. Ransom the f clown lost a thousand dollars to me, Carney Joe, and I will hold his joke book hostage until I get paid. It's my f lawyer's business card. Brent Bailiwick JD. Legal problems? We'll screw them for you. I'm in the phone book. Ransom, I'm glad I caught you before you went on stage. Autographs are a hundred bucks. Ransom, I'm your business manager and lawyer. I don't want your autograph. Okay, 50 then. I just wanted to let you know that your mistress is waiting at your house in Aspen. And your private jet is being fueled and ready to whisk you there when the show is over. Also, we have a deal worth millions to license a line of toddler Ransom the Clown talking insult dolls. Did he get the liability clause waived? Correct. They will assume all liability when the kids grow up to be beepholes. Good. Toddlers start out as It's not my fault they end up that way. Okay, fine. 25 bucks. I should have been a dentist. F you! Just take the big bucks. It's exactly 138 bucks in unmarked bills. Ooh, my cloud fro looks great now. Now there's the face I love. Hmm, the number of trailers parked outside my door. Including mine. The number of stars over my makeup mirror. The number of kids that Carney Joe has. No, wait! You got my money, Clowny? That's Ransom the Clown, asswipe. 
Okay, you got my money ransom, the asswipe clown? 1,000 clams or you're not getting your joke book back. Eh, serves you right for playing the duckies. I need my joke book. The crowd's waiting for me. I told you before. You ain't getting it till I get the thousand bucks you owe me for the duckies. Plus, $138 in interest. Where the f am I gonna get that kind of dough? I have a show to do. 138 bucks in interest, you loan shark. You are putting a squeeze on me. Not my problem. I have your money. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, here's your money. Now where's my junk buck? Ah, uh, wait, are you messing with me? That's only 138 bucks in interest. Where's the grand you owe me? Yeah, thought you'd settle for less. Uh, beggars can't be choosers. Oh, yeah? Well, I choose to hang on to your joke book till I get the full 1138 bucks. Now, beggar off. Nope. No waiting, take a shot. You got my money ransom, the asswipe clown. So, uh, how's the old ball and chain and kids, huh? My wife's doing fine, no thanks to you. And so are the nine kids. But they still cries themselves to sleep every night after that scare you gave them. You, I'm out of here. Hmm. The number of trailers parked outside my door, including mine. The number of stars over my makeup mirror. The number of kids that can't... Let's see if I can remember this combination. Okay, now. And finally... Tough da. Next time, I'm setting it to one, two, three. I can't open that. Yes. You got my money ransom, the ass white clown. I have your money. A thousand bucks plus interest. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, well, not much choice. Now where's my joke book? Yeah, the jokes all suck. So how'd you get to be so famous with jokes like these? Yeah? What do you know about being funny? Uh, about as much as you do, which is nothing. Now, scram, clowny. You're scaring the customers. Uh, step right up. Hello, faces. I'm Ransom the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily, and if you do, it's your own fault for not being able to take a joke. You guys love that pillow factory. It's the lamest claim to fame a town has ever had. Paris has the Eiffel Tower, New York has the Statue of Liberty, and Thimbleweed Park has a pillow factory. You better hope to God that feather pillows never go out of style. I was amazed you weren't a bunch of fatzos. What with all this bottomless foie gras and champagne you have at the parties here. Then I ate at your diner. Their food is a better purgative than Ipecac. Hey you, lady with a huge nose. I say lady, but your beak suggests you're a toucan. You shouldn't have bought tickets for the show tonight, toots. You should be saving your money for a rhinoplasty. Hey, you, dude with the stupid mustache. You think you look like Magnum P.I.? A 70s porn star called. He wants his mustache back. Hey, you, kid with a crappy wheelchair. Were you in a past life or something? Seriously, kid, you're in a wheelchair, and you got a face that looks like that? God's definitely punishing you for something. 
Hey, you, kid with the ugly shirt. Are you colorblind? Your shirt is about to give me a seizure. I mean, I'm a clown, and even I wouldn't touch something that garish. Hey, you, ugly old lady with the hairy mole. Or is it your parasitic twin? Whatever it is, I hope you bought a separate ticket. Because if it's big enough to ride the roller coaster by itself, it's not freeloading in my audience. You will be forever sorry for what you've just said. I curse you to never be able to remove your makeup and to roam these circus grounds until the end of time. He went on for another two hours, insulting everyone he could. Some people laughed because they thought it was funny, but most laughed because they were uncomfortable, and laughing is the best way to hide from the embarrassment of others. But after the show, in his dressing room, there wasn't going to be any laughter. Ha! I killed tonight! One of my best shows ever! I hope that ugly old lady with a curse breaks a hip on the way home. Now to get this makeup off, hop on my private jet and go see my mistress Cindy in Aspen. Yeah. What the? F this makeup isn't coming off. What the Lady, you up the you come on. As much as he tried, his makeup wouldn't come off. That old lady wasn't just any old lady. She was Madame Morena, mistress of the dark arts. When she curses you, it's not an empty threat. Something Ransom was just now finding out. This makeup of that old my lady! Ransom, I've got some bad news. What do you want, you bald, greedy little Can't you see I'm having a problem? Grab a tissue and some rubbing alcohol and help me, you Your private jet crashed while trying to land. Your wife found out about your mistress, and she's taking everything you own except the house in Aspen. There was a fire in Aspen, and your house burned to the ground. The toy and doll licensing deal is dead, and they're suing you for breach. And one more thing. I quit. What? And go beep yourself. And that's why Ransom the Clown is such a creep. And you should go arrest him for murder. That's an interesting story. We'll go check up on him. Hmm, I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move him out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hon, while it's still hot. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Okay, that is the worst hot dog I've ever eaten. I, um, gotta go. <sighs> I feel better now. Hello, Reno. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is uh, uh, quite annoying. No, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, they will be taken care of. Yes, sir. Permanently. Oh, yes, sir. Violently. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, wrestling was quite good tonight. Goodbye, sir. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? Hi there, I'm Quickie Pal Leonard. How can I help you? I'm Junior Special Agent Reyes. 
Uh, I'm not holding if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Do you know anything about the body by the river? No, but I heard the sheriff nearly ralphed when he saw it. The only bods I've seen lately are the righteous babes at the top shelf of the magazine rack. Let's not go there. Have you seen anyone acting suspiciously around town? Actually, now you mention it, I did see something suspicious a couple of nights ago. I was on the late shift getting ready to close up and grab some za when Willie the town bum walks in. Was totally whack when I think about it. Why did Willie seem suspicious to you? Well, normally we have to toss him out because the dude smells grody and he never has any money. But for the first time in forever, Bro pulls out this wallet and flashes a fat stack of dead presidents. I thought it was kind of bitching when he bought out the liquor cabinet. Could the wallet you saw have belonged to Willie? <laughs> oh, no way! That wallet was his! I figured he got lucky and found it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But come to think of it, I'm pretty sure the wallet had some weird red stains on it. At the time, I thought it was the cherry mouthwash he drinks, but it could have been blood. Tell me a bit about yourself, Leonard. Dude, how do you know my name? Are you, like, telepathic or something? No. You just told me your name, and it's also on your name tag. Do you like your job here at the Quickie Pal? Heck yeah! I got a freaking sweet deal here, with free coffee and minimum wage. Plus, I don't get many customers on the late shift, so I get plenty of time to think. Ugh, these flickering lights are going to drive me insane. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip, isn't it? Oh, they're even better if you get a little toked up and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, officer, I'll get those fixed right away. You said you get a lot of time to think. I'm like an abstract thinker, way ahead of the curve, man. My mom says I should be more like my cousin Bernard, who got a scholarship to MIT. But why be like that dweeb when I could be like Chuck Edmund? Tell me about Chuck. He's my freaking hero, man. Dude never went to college, just started building his machines when he was a kid. That guy made this town rich just by doing what he loved. You seem to really admire Chuck. That's why I dropped out of high school. I don't want to live my life for the man like some peon in a polyester cage. No offense. None taken. What do you think about the state of the town? Just ignore the losers who say this town is over. I mean, pff, not even. We got everything a person could ever need here in the Quickie Pal, for one. I'm going to look around your store. I found this bottle. I'd like five cents back for cleaning up the environment. Well, I'd like five cents from you for taking your bottle. <laughs> Just kidding. Quickie Pal humor. Here you go. There aren't any maps left. Sorry, little dude. The sheriff came by a bit ago and nabbed all the maps. Didn't even pay for them. Something about immature dominion or something like that. I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I...
Hey there. Let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Alrighty now. Um, based on your sign, I was kind of expecting this place to be a bakery. Sorry about that, hon. This used to be Ricky's Cakes, but now we sell vacuum tubes. Sounds like an interesting turn of events. Anyway, I'm Special Agent Reyes. I have some questions for you. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm Ricky Lee, and I'm the proprietor of this little store. What can I do for you, hon? I'm looking for a tube. We have lots of tubes here. Over 3,000 different makes and models. Do you know the two-letter model identifier? And what is the make number? Oh, did one of the Hydrant Tron tubes burn out again? Oh, yes. The Pigeon Brothers need one right away. Okay, I'll put it on the town's account. I'll get one for you, hun. You just wait right there. I'll be back before you know it. Here you go. Give the pigeons my regards. Here's your WC-67 too. Thank you. All fixed. Here's our card in case you need any more plumbing help. We'll just clean up here and be gone soon. Uh, that tape is for official government business only. Well, take a look at this batch. Let me see that. Ah, oh, you work for the government, too. Uh, okay, go easy on the tape. We're almost out. Uh, since you're with the government, I guess you're entitled to some tape. Just go easy on it. We're almost out. Go easy on the tape. We're almost out. Excuse me, ma'am. My, my, my. What do we have here? I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't pay for affection. <laughs> Sweetie, I'm not a hooker. 
Although, there is something about a man in federally mandated polyester that makes me want to forget my wedding vows. I'm Lenore Edmund Mulch, of the famed Pillowtronics Edmund family, and I'm waiting for my husband and son to arrive on the bus. Do you know anything about the body by the river? Oh, sweetie. Yes, yes, yes. So glad someone is finally getting rid of it. But one does hear things, and I do have an inkling of who might be connected to this nasty business. Tell me who you think is connected to the body. Well, I hate to cast aspersions, but I suppose it is for the good of the town. Tell me what you know. Actually... No, I can't do this. The Edmund reputation is at stake. Ma'am, please tell me what you know. Fine, it was my sister Dolores. She abandoned our family and the business to become a... Flooring inspector? No, 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 no. It was far worse. She became... A video game developer. It all started a few years back. Uh, she only wanted one thing. To be a game designer for that awful game company. Mucus phlegm. Uncle Chuck wanted something else for her, but no. She was too selfish. Only wanted to make stupid adventure games. I've got to get out of this town. Uncle Chuck wants me to program his factory computers, but I just want to design games. I wish I could get a job at a company like Mucus Flem Games. Now the only thing I have to look forward to is my favorite computer magazine. In fact, I should check the mailbox and see if it's arrived yet. Ricky Lee's famous thimbleberry pie. Hi These are in mint condition. No way I'm going to touch them. It's the math trophy I won when I was 12 and attending a summer program at Thomas Bodeman's School of Mathematics. It's made out of solid pewter, except for the infinity symbol, which is pure titanium. I should check the mailbox for my computer magazine. Hi there, George. I was just about to check the mail. Great timing. You still around, Dolores? Thought you'd have left this podunk of a town by now. Yes, hopefully soon. I'm looking for a job at a game company in the big city. That's not gonna make your Uncle Chuck happy. He'll just have to deal with it. What brings you all the way out here? I have your special magazine here. Oh, I've been waiting for that. Thank you. Sure, it's what we dedicated government employees do. Walk all the way out into the country to deliver a magazine. It's Bite Me World, the best computer magazine ever. Wow, an ad for a job at Mucus Flem Games. Hi, Doug. What are you digging? All right, Dolores. I'm just digging stuff in the front green. Mostly holes, but then I buries them again, all the entirety. Okay, Doug. You're doing a good job. Ta, Dolores! Diggin! Carefully handling broken glass? There's nothing inside except an empty glass. The glass is now filled with water.
Franklin, you idiot! I'm just trying to, you know, help. Is that yelling? Oh, gag me. I hope my dad and Uncle Chuck aren't fighting again. And since most of the machinery at the pillow factory is lying fallow, I've come up with this, you know, great plan to repurpose them. We can use them to make, you know, plush toys. Franklin, you idiot! The company is Pillowtronics, not stupid plush toytronics. We make pillows! What do you think that would do to our credibility, our reputation? O okay, Chuck, you're right, but um, I was up all night working on the business plan. Maybe uh, you could just, you know, look at it? No, no, no! It's a pillow factory! Are you two fighting again? I'm getting so sick of this. Your brothers! Take a chill pill. You started the pillow factory together. Won't you ever stop fighting about it? Nothing you need to worry about, Dolores. Uh, right, Franklin, old brother? Ah, yes. You know, your uncle and I were just, uh, you know, talking business. I have some work to do. Dolores, can you get my 08 millimeter point tip soldering iron? You know, Uncle Chuck, you should use a 2 millimeter flat tip, and you never heat your solder hot enough. <laughs> That's my favorite niece. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory. I know you'll keep the Edmund pillow dream alive. Hello, my favorite niece. You should be nicer to my father. He just wants to help. Franklin is well-meaning, I will give you that. But he just doesn't have the same passion and vision for pillows that you and I have. Hmm. I just wanted to say how much I love you, Uncle Chuck. I love you too, Dolores. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory and restore the family heritage. Hi again, George. It's not like a government employee to make a mistake, but I forgot to deliver this important letter for your Uncle Chuck. He's busy in his workshop and can't be disturbed. I'll take it for him. Okay, Dolores. Here it is. And remember, it's illegal to open someone else's mail. Punishable by a $50,000 fine and or five years in jail. Thanks, George. That's good to know. Okay, back to my vitally important government job. It's a letter to my Uncle Chuck. As expected, the post office's poorly programmed auto stamp cancellation machine has failed again. Amateurs. I'm dialing the mucus phlegm modem number. It's connecting. I can't believe my computer's connected to mucus phlegm. Welcome to the new online Mucus Phlegm job application program. Just fill out your personal information and answer a few simple mucus programming questions. Then print out the application and send it to Mucus Phlegm. We'll get back to you in exactly five days. What is your name? Thank you. What is your address? Noted. Next, what's your programming language of choice? The language you are most proficient in. Very ambitious, we like that. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question, when the screen scrolls, it moves by It'd be better to find some reference book on mucus before I answer these. I need to go find a book about mucus programming. Hmm, it says there's a book on mucus here. 
It's in section 3.1. No one will miss this out of order sign. Why not plush toys? Uncle Chuck never should have talked to you like that. He's right. My idea was worthless. I'm worthless. Dad, I don't like to see you like this. I liked your idea for the pillow factory. Chuck thought it was a bad idea. He's right. He's never even read it. Bye, Dad. I love you. Goodbye, Dolores. The out of order sign is gone, so it's obviously fixed. Haven't been up here for a long time. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question. When the screen scrolls, it moves by... Next question. How many parameters can functions take? Next question. How many actors can be displayed at one time? It'd be better to find some reference book on mucus before I answer these. I need to study the... Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question. When the screen scrolls, it moves by... Next question. How many parameters can functions take? Next question. How many actors can be displayed at one time? Next question. What are room backgrounds compressed into? Thank you for taking the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Congratulations, you passed the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. Hmm, I printed my job application, but the page is blank. Maybe the printer is out of ink. Good idea, but not while I'm holding the log. This log should burn really well now. Flask of Extreme Chili Sauce by Brian H.J. Comes with a warning. You might breathe fire. Maybe I should be careful with this. Whoa! Great. Now I'm carrying around a handful of the ink bottle is now full of its special gas for a chainsaw. The ink bottle is now full of black ink. That should do it. The ribbon is now fully inked. There! The blank paper is back in the Printron 3000. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. 
I always like to watch this part. Now I just need to stamp the envelope. Uncle Chuck, I have something for you. What is it, Dolores? A letter George the Postman just delivered. Oh, I've been expecting this. I'll deal with it later. It's already open. It's turned on. I don't want to pick that up. My letter to Mucus Fly... I hope I get the job. Hiya, Dolores. I have a letter for you. Oh! Good luck. See ya. Diggin'! It's a letter from Mucus Phlegm. Did I get the job? Now that I'm in my room, I'm still so scared to open it. Okay, but if it's a no, that means I'm stuck in Thimbleweed Park and have to take over the pillow factory. Okay, but if it's a yes, what will become of Dad, stuck here alone with Uncle Chuck? Okay, but... Okay, okay, I'm opening it. Yes! It's a job offer from Mucus Phlegm to be a game programmer. I'm so excited. Can't wait to tell Uncle Chuck. He'll be so proud. But first... I can't wait to tell Uncle Chuck about my job offer. I can't wait to tell Uncle Chuck about my job offer. He'll be so proud. Hello, my favorite niece. Uncle Chuck, Uncle Chuck, great news. Yes, Dolores, what is it, my dear future leader of Pillotronics? I, uh, here, read this. You're what? You're giving up the opportunity to run Pillotronics to be, uh, 
to be a game programmer? Yes, that's what I've always wanted to do. Not run Pillowtronics. I'm leaving on the first bus out of Thimbleweed Park. Then, Dolores, you are out of my will. You're giving up over $10 million. That's $20 million in 2017 dollars. Just to pick an arbitrary date in the future. You are dead to me. Dolores broke Uncle Chuck's heart and started programming those murder simulators. Real life murder is the next logical step for her, sweetie. Stop her before she schemes her way into sweet Uncle Chuck's inheritance. Sure, we'll get right on that. Come back and see me soon, sweetie. Ciao. Hmm. I haven't seen Agent Ray for a while. One hey there! Let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Well, hi. Welcome to Ricky's Tubes. Since you don't sell cakes anymore, what's your store called now? Not really sure. I've been bouncing a few ideas around since the pivot. I don't suppose you have any suggestions. Tubular Tubes. Oh, that's a great name. I'm so lucky you wandered in today. The kindness of strangers is amazing. Glad I could help. What do you think of Chuck? Oh, it's so sad that Chuck Edmund passed away. He was my hero. His booming economy gave us the bakery, and now his two-based technology is giving me a chance to keep my store open. I think it's just the boost the town needs. Why did you stop selling cakes? Well, I didn't have much choice. People used to line up around the block for my muffins and pies. But over the past couple of years, business really slowed down. Oh, I'm not complaining, though, because it's given me an opportunity to go in a whole new direction. Why did you choose to sell vacuum tubes instead? Well, hon, it's the darndest thing. At first, I just sold a few spares I had lying around to try and help the bakery. But pretty soon, those bad boys were selling better than the hotcakes going stale on my racks. Are you really this happy about selling vacuum tubes? Oh, you betcha. These tubes are my life's calling. I thought I'd miss the smell of fresh bread every day, but the smell of ozone from the tubes is even better. And their electrical glow is as warm as an apple pie fresh from the oven. What do you think about the state of the town then? It's not as bad as people make it out to be. A couple of stores have closed, sure, but it's just gonna make way for new, fresh businesses to bring life back to the town. I'm sure in no time at all, the town will be completely rejuvenated. Do you know anything about the body by the river? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> it's super sad. The poor guy. Can't imagine anyone from around here doing something so awful. Are you sure you don't have any suspicions about the killer? Oh, no way, Jose! I don't believe for a second anyone in Thimbleweed Park is a killer. It had to be a drifter, or one of those mean city folks passing through. Just promise to be careful who you trust. Oh, maybe you big city agents can't understand what it's like to live in such a nice little town. But I know these people, and they are like family to me. Some of them are a bit eccentric, sure, but I just can't picture any of them as a murderer. That's all for now. Don't leave town. Okay, hon. Just holler if you need me. I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I... An arm extended in friendship or supplication. Hmm. Hard to tell. Certainly... It needs a dime to work.
I'm not sure why, but okay. Seems like a waste of a good dime. That doesn't seem to work. The cell phone has no reception. Help! I'm trapped in the sewer. Please call the authorities and let them know. You'll notify someone. Thanks. I got an emergency call about someone being locked in the sewer. <laughs> I should have expected, Reno, it was you. I don't like being interrupted when wrestling is on. Bad news, Sheriff. There are no Donut Arenos down here. This case doesn't seem like something the feds would be interested in, hmm? Now you should head back to the home office of Reno before you get hurt. There is a killer on the loose. Yeah. I'll run that up the home office arena flagpole. In the meantime, can you get me out of here? Sure, just follow me. No, oh, I will need to blindfold you. Nothing about this town surprises me anymore. Now oh, there's a bus leaving in a few hours. I think we can handle the investigation from here, Areno. Welcome to the Thimbleweed Nickel. Eight years of experience and two degrees in journalism tells me you're a fed. I guess nothing gets by the press. You spend as much time as I have dealing with law enforcement. You get a second sense of this stuff. Plus the cheap suits. Mmm, mostly the cheap suits. What's the deal with your sheriff? Seems kind of odderino. He is an oddball, but eh, so is everyone around here. And it's only gotten worse since Chuck died. Chuck Edmund? Chuck Edmund, the pillow magnet. He pretty much ran this town since the 50s and owns the giant pillow factory. Well, owned. He died a few days ago. His niece Dolores and her sister Lenore stand to inherit a fortune if they'll just stop fighting. What else do you know about Chuck? He started the pillow factory with his brother Franklin in the late 30s to make pillows for the war effort. Pillows win wars was their slogan. The factory and Chuck were the center of the thimbleweed social scene of the 50s. Go on. Chuck invested millions in automation and became an expert in AI. Agricultural investment? Artificial intelligence. Uh, computers that can think. He started automating the whole town. People tell me it was like living in the future. That's one of his machines over there. The Copytron 3000. Then, what? The big pillow factory fire happened and killed several workers, and the whole place was shut down. Many blamed the fire on over-automation and computer error. But I think Chuck manipulated the sheriff, and it was blamed on the security guard on duty at the time. But it was too late. Chuck was disgraced, and the factory's been closed for years. A dark shell of abandoned machinery. What do you know about the pillow factory security guard? Not much. He died in the fire and was blamed for the whole thing. But I have my doubts. I just need some evidence, and I can finish my big story and expose the whole thing. We're here investigating the murder. Know anything? Not much. Just what I heard over the police scanner. Body found in the river. I'll send my best reporter to check it out in the morning. Know who my best reporter is? Ugh, you... If this damn town wasn't such a podunk, I'd have a couple of Pulitzers by now. This pillow factory fire story is my ticket out of here. We'll need a complete press blackout. Not with the First Amendment still in place. 
the core of a strong democracy is a strong press. Don't you mean the Fifth Amendment? Nope. That sets out rules for indictment by grand jury in eminent domain and protects the right to due process. Don't you mean the 26th Amendment? Nope. That prohibits the denial of the right of U.S. citizens 18 years of age or older to vote on account of age. Don't you mean the 19th Amendment? Nope. That prohibits the denial of the right to vote based on sex. Don't you mean the 27th Amendment? There is no 27th Amendment. Maybe someday in the far, far future. Don't you mean the 4th Amendment? No. That prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures and sets out requirements for search warrants based on probable cause. What do you know about the Pillow Factory fire? I have my suspicions of a big cover-up arena, if you know what I mean. I've tried to gather evidence, but I've been blocked at every turn. It's a small town, so I have to watch the feathers I ruffle. Do you offer home delivery? Why? You plan on moving here? The town's got a charm to it. Nice chatting. Got a murder to solve. Please don't mess with the police scanner. I'm waiting for a call about a woman by the diner with some inappropriate attire. Safely first savings, where saving safely is saving smartly. Please note that homeless people and tentacle creatures are not eligible for small business loans. Stupendous Brothers Traveling Circus. Headline act, Ransom the Insult Clown. Minors must be accompanied by an adult, and if you're offended, it's your own beeping fault. Playtime is over at the Park Arcade. Blast bad guys in a tournament of our latest game, Die, Enemy, Die. Highest scorer gets free tokens all night. Excuse me. Be with you in a second. How can I help, Agent Reyes? Do you know anything about the body out by the bridge? No, everyone in town is still collecting their mail as usual. No one from my route is missing, and I would definitely notice if they were. I mean... Not to brag, but I did consider joining the Feds. It's just not as prestigious or as challenging as postal work. Know any good postal jokes? Oh, you bet I do. Why are postal workers such great comedians? They have a special delivery, huh? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> good one. Why is there so much mail to sort when the town seems deserted? That's classified information. As a federal agent, you should know it's my duty to uphold the privacy and the sanctity of the mail. Unless it pertains to an investigation and you have all the necessary paperwork, I can't help you. Who is all this mail addressed to? I can't tell you. It would be a federal crime. I would assume you knew that, being a federal employee and all. Or is this some sort of sting to catch crooked mail clerks? Because I keep things ship-shape here in the Thimbleweed Branch, so there's no need to worry about us here. Thanks for your help. We'll be back if we have any more questions. Anytime. You got any loose change? I'm a federal agent, and I have some questions for you. You know anything about the body found by the bridge? A body? I thought that was a log wearing a suit. Do you know anything about the body or not? What body? I thought we were talking about a log. Where do you sleep at night? I have a premium bit of cardboard real estate in the nicest part of the sewers. I've had almost no gator attacks. And there's even a grate for ventilation, so my sewer lung is even better than ever. What's that in your pocket? Looks like a wallet. I don't have a wallet. I'm a bum. You really want to play this game? <laughs> Maybe I'm just happy to see you. It looks like something with blood on it. That's not blood, just river mud. Ah, so you do in fact admit there is something in your pocket. 
Well, um, well, I can't give it to you. What would I put my money in? I don't know. See? It's not so easy, is it, Hotshot? I've had enough. I'm a federal agent. Hand over the bloody wallet. Well, I may be a drunk bum, but I know my rights, and you need a warrant. Now look, you find me another wallet to keep all personals in, and this one is yours. It's coming apart anyway, not like those amazing Ransom the Clown wallets they used to sell before its career hit the skids. Now, Ransom was an adulterer, a cheat, and complete But he licensed good wallets. We'll play it your way, for now. Tell me what you know about Chuck. Ah, uh, the man was an ass, and I'm glad he died of a heart attack. He ruined my life over nothing. How did Chuck ruin your life? Mr. Edmund made sure I was blacklisted in Thimbleweed Park. My so-called friends turned their backs on me. My watch repair business mysteriously burnt down, and I lost everything. Couldn't get dinner reservations, let alone a job. In the end, all I had left of my old life was my beloved Stradivarius. Why did Chuck try to ruin you? I took his girlfriend out to see that lame insult clown one night. But in my defense, Chuck changed girlfriends more often than he changed shirts. Well, how was I supposed to know she was flavor of the month for the Pilotronics playboy? We'll talk later. Don't leave town. Where would I go? Buy me some kombucha? Cast your lot before it's too late. Ugh, pretty disgusting head. There's a small name tag. Seb the Navigator's Head. It's a bottle of Eric's Eye Magic Special Drops. The label says, restores your vision with a soothing river of tears. Side effects may invoke painful memories. The label says, Haoling King Yao Tea, a magical tea. Gives you the gift of speaking many languages. A mysterious force must be holding it in place. Welcome to the Thimbleweed Park Occult Bookstore. I'm Madame Marina. Are you here for the hexes, the summer blowout sale, or... or, uh, based on those suits you're wearing, my tax records? I don't get too many visits from suited and booted federal agents these days. I'm Agent Reyes. I'm just here to ask a few questions, ma'am. Well, all right then. How can I help? Do you know anything about the body by the river? I know everything that goes on around here. Great! So, you know who was involved in the murder? Okay, so I don't know everything right this minute. But if you're willing to get your hands a little dirty, I can find the answers you're looking for. What do you need to help us find the killer? I don't want to break agent protocol, but we really need a lead in this case. I need to go on a vision quest to find the answer. But I can't really reach out into the void without a little bit of... assistance? If you can get me an Agaricus Fungus Visionum Delectamentum Mushroom from the sewers, I might be able to help. Those don't sound legal. And your point is... What is this place? It's the county's primary source of occult books, knowledge, and services. You need hexes, curses, cure-alls, or curios? You come to me. You need voodoo, hoodoo, fortunes, or flim-flams? You come to me. Fascinating. You need cough drops or coffee filters? Yeah, you go to the quickie, pal. Can you really hex people? I sure can, no matter what the consumer watchdog service says. Might not always come out exactly as you want, but spirits work in mysterious ways. So if you have any complaints, take it up with them. Did you hex Ransom the Clown? I'm very proud of that curse. He was being a jerk and he needed a little beat down with the karma bat. 
I think a permanently cursed face might have been more than a little beating, ma'am. You want a taste of my karma bad, Agent Reyes? No, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Tell me about yourself, Madame Morina. There's not much to tell. I set up my shop in Thimbleweed after finessing my craft on the road for many years. After all, there's only so many nights you can vomit peyote and pull cactus needles out of your ass in the desert before it becomes old news. How did you get into the occult? Oh, I suppose when I realized I could get baked and make money doing it. I thought it was a serious spiritual practice. I don't know what to tell you, dear. I like tripping balls. And with the money I rake in from my curses, I'm gonna retire on a yacht in the Bahamas. Why did you set up shop here? The vibrations. This town has a dark and weird energy which makes it perfect for a cult business. Do you mean an energy like the signals I've been hearing about? No, no, no. Those signals sparking through the air lately are something else altogether. I don't know what they mean, but I know it isn't good. Goodbye. It's the Book of the Dead. Take it if you wish. It's on the house. But beware! Beware of what? Uh, nothing, it just sounded ominous. I can't open that. Thimbleweed Park guided tours? I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can get on with my plan. agent of Reno. You can't just go bumbling around the county without a map. It's too easy to get lost. There is a killer Reno on the loose. I am a federal agent. I can take care of myself. And a darn fine agent, I'm sure of. But we have laws around here, and everyone is required to have an official map. A map? Seriously? Oh, yes, and not just any map, but an official map. And where would I find this official map? Well, the county is plumberino out of them. I guess this really messes up your investigation. I'm sure the head office will understand Reno. Shall I mark the case as unsolved? Not a chance. The feds never give up. Or should I say, the Fed-Arenos never give up. I see. Now you're mocking me. Aren't there some donuts that need eating? Well, you got me there. Oh, those donuts aren't gonna eat themselves. But we have laws around here, and everyone is required to have an official map. Yeah, you're right. I'll head back to town and find a map. Ooh, donuts do sound good.
Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? There aren't any maps left. The sheriff came by a bit ago and nabbed all the maps. to stay focused and solve this murder so I can do what I need to do. Do you know this map is a priceless first edition? Please don't touch. I can read it fine from here. It's a color Copytron 3000. Please don't mess with the police scanner. I'm waiting for a call about a woman by the diner with some inappropriate attire. Attention all units. Enough screwing around. I've got a cape. Please don't mess with the police scanner. I'm waiting for a call about a woman by the diner with some inappropriate attire. Attention all units. It's not much, but we're short a story on page four. I'll be back soon. Don't you touch my map. What a nice copy. And in color, too. Whoa there, little agent of Reno. Like I said before, you can't just go bumbling around the county without a map. I have an official map right here. Oh, I see. Well, uh, that looks legit Reno. Hmm. Odd. I thought I... Yeah, well, I guess the law is the law. I guess I'd better return all these maps to the quickie pal. I feel like we're getting close to cracking this case. The only thing you're getting close to cracking is my patience with you. Let's work together and I can get on with my... I mean, we can get out of this town as quickly as possible. Agreed. We need to identify the body using the face Tron with a photo of the body and the victim's photo ID. You mean like a driver's license or passport? Or Burger Shack loyalty card recognized around the world? We need a fingerprint match. Using the Fingertron with a fingerprint from the murder weapon and an official fingerprint book. We need a blood match. Using the Bloodtron with a blood swap from the body and Willie's blood wallet. We need to talk to that crazy clown at the circus. He's got serial killer written all over him. Wouldn't it be quicker to just shoot him? We need to have a chat with the geeky programmer at the old mansion. 
There is something odd about her. Yeah, a woman with a brain. Definitely suspicious. Let's get cracking. <sighs> Keep your panties on! I'm coming! Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. So take your dime store suit and good news pamphlets and stick them where the sun don't shine! Excuse me, Mr. Ransom. I need to ask you about the body by the bridge. <laughs> What's the matter, kid? Never seen a man wearing makeup before? <laughs> Look, face, you better start talking or get out of here. I don't need another chlorophobic wet pissing his pants on my doorstep. Uh, sorry, sir. I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> Jeez, kid, what the f is wrong with you? Let me start again. <laughs> Jeez, kid, what the f is wrong with you? Let me just turn around for a moment. Ah, that's a bit better. I'm sorry about that. I guess I never did get over what happened at my 10th birthday. Whatever, bozo. Does this mean you're gonna have your back to me the whole time? We'll see how it goes. What do you know about the body by the river? What body? Earlier this evening, we found a body down by the bridge. We're investigating, and I was told you might have some information for me. Nah, I heard some sirens before, but I figured they were headed for the mansion mansion. That's where most of the f***ed up stuff happens. What weird stuff do you know about at the mansion? You want to find out about the mansion mansion? You're gonna have to talk to some other idiot. I keep to myself, and the town folk leave me the f*** alone, thank you. I'm not about to rock the boat. I don't pay rent here, and I can't go anywhere else after my ex-wife took me for everything I had. We heard you don't get along with the locals? Given my creepy clown face and Paul Jean for abusive name-calling, it's not made me a popular community figure. No. But I don't need the validation of these small-town losers. I'm Ransom the Clown. I was on the Tonight Show. I'm great. What do you know about Chuck? Chuck? As in, Chuck, my factory is too good to make toys, Edmund? Didn't know the pompous well myself, but I knew his brother Franklin. Weedy guy. Total Scared to stand up to his big brother, even though the family business was in the crapper. How do you know Franklin Edmund? We were supposed to go into business together. My act was about to go bigger than... Jesus. I was a hit on The Tonight Show. I was on my way to the top, so we figured why not cash in with a little merchandising. Franklin wanted to get the pillow factory into making toys, so it seemed like a good fit. What kind of toys were you planning to make with Franklin? Jeez, how do you get by in life without brains or beauty? Isn't it obvious? We were gonna make Ransom the Clown insult dolls. Would've been great if Franklin hadn't bailed on me and gone missing before we signed the contracts. I could have been rich by now if that little toady had grown a backbone. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. Whatever, pencil neck. Not like I'm going anywhere, but you're not getting inside without a warrant. I remember what those dolls were all the rage. People would wait in line for hours to get one. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? That doesn't seem to work. I can't... 
You're investigating here, too? I wouldn't go in there if I were you. What do you mean? Why shouldn't I go in? Because you're probably superstitious and would believe all that claptrap about paranormal activity in the hotel. Paranormal? Really? That's terrible. How serious are the reports? Should I be worried? Uh, given that there's no such thing as ghosts, you'll be fine. What are you doing here? Well, Chuck's brother Franklin went missing a few weeks ago. Is he the body by the bridge? Nope. But this reporter's nose says there's something odd about the whole thing. I'm working up a story, but the only lead I have is someone seeing him here briefly a few weeks ago. He was seen around the lobby area. Then he just vanished. Big day today. I'm meeting some promising investors. I know they'll believe in my plan to turn the dying pillow factory into a highly profitable stuffed toy factory. It can't fail. Just gotta check into a room without Chuck knowing about it. He has eyes and ears everywhere. I'll need a disguise. Also need to copy this prospectus so I can give it to the investors and keep my copy. And Chuck wouldn't know a good idea if it hit him. Trade your stuff for a teddy kid? <laughs> Why would I want that, dweeb? It's bonk. Ah, oh, don't you just love this music? Hey, dude, what's your damn Yo, dude. What's that jacket you're wearing? The latest and greatest jacket. It zips in the front. Don't most jackets do that? <sighs> you're too old to understand. What's on your face? They're the latest and greatest nose glasses from the Jason the News Guy adventure game from Mucus Phlegm Games. With these on, no one knows who I am. What's on your feet? The latest and greatest Reeboks. I just got them. Aren't they rad? What's with all the latest and greatest? I'm not grody like you. Everyone knows that unless you've got the latest and greatest, you might as well barf. I'm not risking my reputation by touching anything that's not like the latest and greatest. What if I said you didn't have the latest and greatest stuff? <laughs> like barf me out. All my stuff is totally the latest and the greatest. Your jacket is not the latest and greatest. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm so sure. Your glasses are not the latest and greatest. <laughs> These glasses? Gotta be the latest and greatest, aren't they? Did something newer come out? <laughs> nah, you're wigging. I can't trust a dweeb like you. Your shoes are not the latest and greatest. What's your damage? Of course, they're totally awesome. I would totally know what was the latest and greatest. Oh yeah? I bet you don't know anything about what's the greatest right now in 1987. Prove you're not just an old dweeb from the 50s. Sure, I can prove it. I'm totally bodacious because I can talk like you and... I know this gnarly dude who... was on MTV and... tells me what's wicked and what'll gag me with a spoon. Whoa! You're legit! I totally believe you know what's tight right now. When you've got something new and sick, I'll trade you. Until then, I'm gonna rock out. Ah, oh, don't you just love this music? Hey, dude, what's your damage? Dude, check out this rad new pillow bear. It's righteous, big time righteous. I'll do you a favor and trade you. You do that for me? Oh, sick. Who? What do you want to trade? I'll trade you the bear for your glasses. No faking. Gag me. Your glasses totally make you look like a dweeb. No, duh! Eh, take the glasses then. Quick, before anyone notices I have them! First, here's my used gum for your collection. Uh, I don't have a gum collection. Uh, never mind that. Now give me that bear so I rock it out. Sure, er, dweeb dude, er, gnarlicious, er, I can't keep this up. Let's get this over with. Here it is. Sweet! 
your ace. Later, dude. A disguise to make my forgettable face even more invisible. Nobody can recognize me now with this foolproof disguise. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? I'd like to check in. Okay, sir. What's your name, Abu, for the booking? Emilio Estevez. Of course, Mr. Estevez. We have a lovely suite, Abu, for you on the third floor. Your suite has been fitted with the new state-of-the-art Abu Hotel Tron 3000. It's such new technology, Abu, that we're still fitting out the rooms on the 10th floor. How else may I be a boo of service? Do you have photocopying here? But of course we do, Abu. Abu, Abu, Abu. That is to say, we normally do, but uh, we've run out of paper, Abu. Unless I get more paper, Abu, I won't be able to help you out. Is there any surveillance in the hotel? No, certainly not, Mr. Estevez. Whoa, we have our state-of-the-art Abu Hotel Tron 3000 system, which creates a VHS video of your entire stay with us. Sounds like surveillance to me. How much, you ask? For just $19.99, you get a unique record of your trip highlights to share with friends, Abu, back home. It's such a new system that we're still installing it on the 10th Abu floor. Since you won't want to miss a second of your amazing Abu stay here, we recommend that guests do not visit the 10th floor. I'm going to look at my, I mean, your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Welcome back to the Edmund Hotel, Mr. Estevez. How may I be a boo of service? Could you use this as photocopying paper? That should be all the paper, Abu, I need. What would you like to photocopy? This prospectus document. Sure thing, Abu. That's all I need. I'll be back in a jiffy, Abu. One task done. Now I should go to my room and prepare. The doors are closed. Hello? Yes, only on Tuesdays. Yes, I'm almost ready for our meeting. I've just got to wrap up a couple more things. I'll call you back when I'm ready. What's that monstrosity? A Hoteltron. Chuck must have had them installed recently. I'll have to find a way to stop it recording my meeting. Hmm, that's not right. It's gone blank. 
There seems to be a little problem, Abu, with your hotel tron. There we go, sir, Abu. Huh. Some blank paper got stuck here accidentally, Abu. I'll dispose, Abu, of this for you. No need to say thank you. We're here to help, Abu. Waiting. What was that? I guess it was nothing. Looks like the Tron machines are working perfectly. No reaction. Perfect. Now Chuck will have no idea what I do in my meeting. I'm finally ready for that meeting. Better give the investors a call to let them know they can come up. You can come up to my room now. I'm ready. Back to being plain old Franklin. That was quick. Oh, it's you. How did you know I was here? Franklin was never seen again. I asked the sheriff for more information, but there was nothing. No body, no Franklin. Some of the more superstitious types claim he's haunting this hotel, but those of us dedicated to fact-finding know that must be poppycock. That's an interesting story. So Franklin's dead as well? No one knows for sure if he's dead. Isn't it a great time to be a journalist in Thimbleweed Park? One missing, a mystery body, and Chuck died of a heart attack. Did you find out the identity of the body in the river yet? We're still working on it. Have there been any obstruction arenas to your investigation? What do you think? Enough said. But you didn't answer my original question. Why are you here? I see I can't fool you. If you ever want to switch professions, we need reporters like you. What's new in the news? Uh, just a bunch of reports about paranormal activity here at the hotel. I don't give them much credence. Thanks for all the information. See you later. If you find out anything publishable, stop by the nickel to let me know. Always time to do laundry later. Come back here. Hey! Stop! Damn broken window. I'll just leave it where it is. That way, I can laugh at the sheriff whenever I feel like crap. <laughs> you! I'm not gonna jump on that without a... Spotter, safety first. Well, that's one. Lil Beeper loves this crap. Okay, two. I can count. Am I really gonna pick up all the rats having more fun at this than I am? Not even half full yet. This almost half full. Half full now. This is safe. At this rate, it'll be 1988 before I'm done. This is gonna take forever. Where's the rat taking the popcorn? What a of a still doesn't work. Well, at least I tried.
<laughs> Mr. Kozlarik really knows his bitch creams. It's my next lawyer's business card. Brent Bailiwick JD. Legal got the page stuck back. Got the page stuck back. Got the page stuck back into the joke book. It's a full bag of popcorn! Here you go, little beeper. Enjoy your crap. Ransom, what are you doing here? The latest issue of Humongous Honka Honkas won't be mailed for at least another week. You, George. Can't a clown visit the post office without the third degree? Sheesh, someone woke up on the wrong side of the big top. Let's try that again. What can I do for you, Chuckles? Hey, George, you lazy f I want to pick up my package. Let me see that. Okay, one moment. And next time, deliver it to me in person. What do you think I pay my tax dollars for? You haven't paid your taxes in years. What do you think sorts all outgoing mail? Well, f you. There's a note inside. Dear Mr. Clown, we hereby return your defective samples. The wallet seems to be made out of a rare endangered species of bird, and the candy dispenser sparks whenever you use it. Please do not contact us again. What a bunch of wads. You got any gluten-free donuts? I have a brand new wallet that no one wants. Oh, Ransom the Clown wallet. Thanks. Here's my old one. What am I gonna do with this piece of... I need to stay focused. Detective Antonio Reyes, junior agent. It's definitely my badge. Feds. Here's a bloody wallet. I hope you get hepatitis. That worked. I have a blood sample. Dead ringer for the body. Oh.
It's working. The paper is drying out. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? You look awfully familiar. Have we met before? I don't believe a boo so. Well, there you go. Do you know what happened to Franklin Edmund? Huh, I saw him, but I don't know a boo what happened to him. Funny thing, Abu, though. Go on. That same day, a man with a large nose, Abu, checked in and then disappeared. You don't say. That is an odd arena coincidence. What room did he check into? Oh, let me see, Abu, now. It was a Mr. Emilio Estevez. Yes. He checked into a room, Abu, on the third floor. I'd like that room key for our investigation. I'm not sure I should do that without a warrant, Abu. But since there's nothing to see there, I suppose, Abu, I can give it to you. Thank you. Finally. How else may I be Abu of service? Is anything going on in the hotel today? Nothing, Abu. Certainly not more cases of food poisoning. Definitely not, Abu. I'm going to check out your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. The doors are closed. That gum appears to be the only evidence that Franklin was ever in this room. What was all that about? Why couldn't they see me? I'm dead? Hmm. Well, I guess that's probably what I deserve. About time you joined us in the land of the almost dead. Who are you? I'm Xavier, the head ghost, and I'm in charge of the ghosts. I run a tight ship. Everyone must pull their weight or face the penalties. What do you mean, pull their weight? Don't ask. Time to update the schedule for everyone to follow. Clara, you're on elevator duty. Don't let anyone get to the penthouse. I was just on elevator duty. No arguing. Now, Virgil, keep up the good work on front door duty. Don't let anyone in or out of the hotel. It's about time the living started realizing who's really in charge around here. That doesn't seem right. That's irrelevant. New ghost, you're going to scare at least two people who try to use the drinking fountain in the lobby. Okay, everyone to work. What are you waiting for, Clara? By the way, your brother died. Chuck's dead? When did that happen? I'm free of Chuck's tyranny. That is, I know he would have come here to tell me off if he could. I wonder why this head ghost seems so bossy. I've got to scare someone? Hmm. Maybe I have special powers. That tickles. Also, the elevator isn't on this floor. You ought to be 
doing your job. Scaring someone in the lobby instead of talking to me. You don't want to make Xavier... Just the drinking, Abu Fountain. As long as it's not something serious, Abu, then I won't have to call our plumbers. Not bad. Now you need to find someone else to scare. Then you'll have met your daily quota. I have to get back to work now. How long are you on door duty for? Until Xavier says we're all done for the day. Now, deep breath. The doors are closed. is going on what's going on here abu the drinking fountain it's um oh it's just the fountain abu again it still doesn't seem serious enough to call the plumbers abu passable i'm surprised you had it in you time for another ghost meeting clara virgil get over here now Virgil, good work on the door. That should do it for today. New ghost. Average first scares. Keep practicing. Clara, stay on elevator duty. I need some privacy. This is outrageously unfair. Why do the men get to finish for the day? Enough complaining. Do you remember what happened last time? All right, all right. Sorry about him. We don't know who put him in charge. The elevator isn't on this floor. a bit strange. What was that? <laughs> what on earth is all that? That poor man! I've gotta help Abu him! Hello, Acme Maintenance? It's the Edmund Abu Hotel. We've got an emergency Abu right now. What do you mean you're not available tonight, Abu? You're supposed to be a 24-hour service arena, Abu! Where will I find someone else, Abu, at this hour? Huh. Well, maybe I imagined it. I heard a rumor your maintenance people aren't available tonight. Why don't you try the Pigeon Brothers? Why, Abu, that's exactly what we need! Thank you so much, Abu. That's the coroner's job. That's disgusting. They've got the house. They've got the 
What was that? Again? Maybe I didn't imagine it. That poor man. Maybe these new people can help aboo him. Poultry Brothers plumbing aboo? We've got a maintenance emergency aboo right now. You can be here right away. Thank aboo you. We've received a signal that you're in need of some paranormal plumbing and electrical help. Thanks. Let me know when you're done. The doors are closed. doing in here? Can't you tell we're doing important business? Um, uh, sorry, I was just... Wait! Where's our Rinstron 3000 gone? Did you take it? Please give it back. Yeah. Sorry, I'll give it back. Oh, thanks. You best be going now. The, do the doors are closed. It's a circus flyer with... Excuse me, sir, may I ask what you are doing? I'm just digging mostly holes. <laughs> and then I put it up again, all neat and tidy. Digging! No, thank you. I don't need any wood. All gassed up. Better ring the doorbell. Hello? How can I help you? Federal agent. Are you kids doing drugs in here? I'm sorry. This isn't a good time to chat. So, if you'll excuse me, I need to talk to my sister about the will reading before heading out. She's waiting for me in the library. Well, okay. Just don't leave town. Dig it! No, according to Agent Protocol, I have to keep this- Thanks. I hope you kept your eyeballs off it. Appears to be a male. Approximately 40 years old. Looks like he's been in the water for 24 hours. You can tell by the pixelation around the nose and neck. Let's see here. There's no wallet in his pockets. But I found a card. Possibly a key card from a hotel. An intact Sarcosicus skeleton here? 
but no one has ever found one so close to the surface. Someone must have stolen it from a natural history museum. That grate won't come off. fridge. In this case, I'd consider labeling it as a potential floating coffin. I hope this is what Madame Marina needs. This could be the murder weapon. We should dust it for prints. There's definitely a clear fingerprint here. I don't have a warrant for a badly tuned violin. Important safety measure to make sure that people wandering sewers don't walk into a pile of dirt accidentally. The, door the doors are closed. The label says Pillow Bear, the toy that can be turned into a pillow. It's a German passport for Boris Schultz.
Wasn't there a tube up there before? Where the hell have you been, Dolores? We're all here waiting for you so we can start the reading of Uncle Chuck's will. Take a chill pill, Lenore. I had to answer the door. It was one of those federal agents. I don't care if it was the flippin' Pope. And hands off the cute one. He's mine. Let's get on with it, sister. I want to know what I got. Wait, I thought you said everyone was here. Where's the lawyer? I don't know. I thought he was coming with you. <sighs> oh, Lenore, you're useless. Has anyone tried calling him? Well, maybe if you hadn't left town and broken Uncle Chuck's heart, we wouldn't need to call the lawyer to read a will. This is all your fault, Dolores. Dolores, if you have anything to say, you say it to me. Leave Peter alone. Dolores, if you have anything to say, you say it to me. Chucky doesn't want to talk to you. Okay, we got off on the wrong foot. Let's try again. Lenore. Dolores. If you came for the will reading, you might as well leave now and save yourself the disappointment. Uncle Chuck had a new favorite niece before he passed. <laughs> also, have you called the stupid lawyer yet? I want to get the will read and see how little Uncle Chuck left you. Would it kill you to help out a little? I wasn't the one who abandoned the family. I was always there for Uncle Chuck, so it's time for you to finally lift a finger and help out. Oh, gag me. All you were ever there for was a handout from Uncle Chuck. Oh, Dolores, I won't shed one tear for you when the will is read and Uncle Chuck left everything to me. So Uncle Chuck really hated me? Can you flip and blame him? You broke his heart when you left to become a you-know-what. A game developer? Oh, shh, shh, shh. Do you want the whole house to hear? Is my career really that shameful? Oh, hell yes, sweetie. Then what do you tell people I do instead? We just tell people you went to rehab. It's better for the family name. You tell people I'm a drug addict? Better they think that than know you chose to make those mind-corrupting murder simulators for a living. For the last time, Lenore, I don't make murder simulators. Oh, sure you don't, sweetie. Ugh. You know what? I don't care. Tell them whatever you like, you grody poser. But this makes us even for the time I used your homecoming crown as a conductor in my homemade generator. Do you know anything about Dad's disappearance? Dad probably ran off to hide somewhere. It's amazing that Dad and Uncle Chuck were cut from the same genes. One a powerful leader and the other, well, uh, spineless. Don't talk about Dad like that, Lenore. You're so cruel. How is Chuck Jr. doing? Chucky is thriving. Some people say he's a brat, but those people just don't recognize his blossoming leadership abilities. No doubt picked up from Chuck Sr. because he certainly didn't get them from his father. How are things with Peter? Fine. Just peachy. 
I can't believe we've only been together 20 years now because it feels like a flippin' eternity. I think we're done here. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. It feels lonely without Uncle Chuck around. I knew it wouldn't work for me. It's a spare AT-25 tube. Very rare, hard to find. I don't have a reason to use- I don't have a reason to use Uncle Chuck's oscilloscope. I don't want to pick that up. It's a receipt from the town's electronics store. One va It's a receipt from the town's electronics store. One vacuum tube puller paid in full. It's my handy ASCII chart. It's my handy ASCII chart. Never know when you'll need to decode binary messages, so I always practice, every day. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? Hi, Ransom. Uh, hi, Ransom. What the f do you want? Were you the killer? No f way. I hardly ever even leave the circus except to pick up all my fan mail. I believe you. You're kind of a creep, but I don't think you're a killer. F you! You know, I was at your fateful last performance. Well, f good for you. So did I insult you? No, I was hiding behind the person in front of me. Your tough luck, I loved insulting kids. It was so easy to make them cry. Seeing you cursed scarred me for life. Oh, now you're just being dramatic. Between all those sobbing people and Madame Marina's curse, I still get nightmares. Well, how do you think I feel? That witch ruined my career, and now I can't even afford to buy makeup remover. As if it would do any good. Well, I think you probably deserved it. F you! Are you sure it wasn't you that killed that poor man? F you! I need to go. Here, take this. I'm tired of carrying it. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubular Tubes. How can I help you? Hi, Ricky. Here's an old receipt. Know anything about tube pullers? Hmm. I seem to remember a tube puller that we got from Smart Buy Electronics. We bought up all their inventory when they went under. Yes, here it is. 
This is a top-of-the-line tube puller. Your uncle always bought the best. Yes, he did. Thank you, Ricky. That should fix it. I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can do what I need to do. Arrest Lily Tilino for the murder of Boris Lutz. Oh, what have we here, Reno? Have our big city agent Arenos actually solved the murder? I'll take that. Let's see what it says, Areno. Oh, blah, Reno, blah, Reno, oh, blah, Reno. Ah, Willie T. Wano. Just as I suspected, Areno. Yeah, I'll be right back. Willie, you are under arrest, Areno, for the murder of Boris Schultz. Who? What? Come with me, Areno. Well, Willie Areno, what have you got to say for yourself? I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, Areno? These feds will break you. You want to close this case, Areno? Have at him. Do you think we should play good cop, bad cop? What else would we play? I'll play bad cop. I'm the bad cop, and she's the good cop. <sighs> You're not supposed to tell him that. Well, I'm not good cop, bad cop. I did it, I did it! I killed the man by the bridge just to watch him die. Anything else you want to confess to? I also kidnapped the Lindbergh baby. Anything else you want to confess to? I'm D.B. Cooper, and I stole all the money. Keep going. You're digging your own grave. I'm Jack the Ripper. Blab on. You can't beat good cop, bad cop. I took the beef. Keep talking, murder boy. I'm the Zodiac Killer. Keep going. You're digging your own grave. I killed Jimmy Hoffa for the mob. I think we have enough to lock you up for life. You're going to the big house, Willie. Don't mess with the feds. I'm glad I caught the killer, and we can finally leave this stinkhole. That's not such a bad place. I learned a lot from working with you, Agent Ray. Yeah, I'll look you up if I'm ever at the home office in Albuquerque. Uh, there is no home office in Albuquerque. No shit, Sherlock. It's a business card for a lawyer. Brant Balowick, JD. Legal problems? Don't worry, we'll screw them for you. I'm in the phone book. Hey, he was Uncle Chuck's lawyer. Pizza! You want a free pizza coupon? Wink, wink. What's the deal with the pizza coupon? You want a free pizza coupon? Wink, wink. Okay, but what do I get with it? <laughs> um, a coupon? <sighs>
What's the deal with the pizza coupon? You want a free pizza coupon? Wink, wink. Okay, but what do I get with it? <laughs> um, a coupon? <sighs> do we know each other? Wait a second. You look familiar. <laughs> Weren't we in freshman chem class together? What's your name? Dolores. I know who you are. You're Dolores Edmund. You and your Uncle Chuck were working on Mind Control Ray to remove our free will before he died. What? D don't play dumb with me. I know you put bugs in our pillows. You'll never take me alive! Ah! It's out of order, but... Hi there, this is Brant Bailiwick, JD. Do you have legal problems? Then you've come to the right place. I'm out of the office today at ThimbleCon 87, handling all cosplay legal issues. Stop by my booth. I can't believe I got over again. What did I do to deserve this treatment? All I wanted to do was entertain people and make them laugh at the stupidity of stupid people. I feel like there's a lesson in all of this, but you, I'm Ransom the Clown. It's all that Franklin's fault. He was going to talk to Chuck about putting my new high-tech Ransom the Clown licensed dolls into production at the old pillow factory. Then he flaked out. He's probably in Mexico skinny dipping with my next wife. Okay, I need to break into that pillow factory and see if my prototype Ransom the Clown doll is still in there. My comeback depends on it. You! Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? Got it. Got the page stuck back into the joke book. It's my joke book, in perfect condition, if you don't mind hamster crap. I can't help but feel there was something suspicious about Uncle Chuck's death. He was a bit eccentric, 
but deep down he had always been a caring and thoughtful uncle. But in the last few years, he became obsessed, and more than usual, with that pillow factory. I need to get inside and see if anything in his old office will help me make sense of it all. I owe it to him to find out what happened. Oh, oh, I'm, you know, really dead. It's just starting to, you know, sink in. I'm never going to hold my Dolores again. I never told her how proud I was of her for getting that job designing games. I was, you know, too afraid of what Chuck would think. Now I'm dead. I don't remember who killed me or why I'm trapped in this hotel. I need to find a way to escape from here. There has to be a way out. A magical book or a spell? Oh, Franklin, now you're going insane. That only works in games. Can't cope with the boredom anymore. Talk to me now. Okay. I'm not very good at talking to, you know, strangers, but I'll give it a try. So, Clara, what's life like as, well, you know, a, a ghost? For starters, it's not life. Of course, but you know what I mean, right? What's it like? It's like being a ghost. Can I, you know, please go to the penthouse? No. Hmm, please. No, you're not my friend. I don't know you anything. How come you're so, you know, upset all the time? That's unfair. I'm not upset all the time. I'm just a little hungry right now, and that makes me angry. That happens to me, too. There should be a word for that. What can ghosts, you know, eat? As a ghost, it's hard to find food that we can eat. My particular weakness has always been ice cream cake. But I'm stuck in this stupid elevator, and I can't get any. Bye, Clara. Sorry, but Xavier said no one could go to the penthouse. Hello, Dolores. How lovely to see you today. How may I be a boo of service? How's business been going? In this town? Always slow. You know how it is. Well, Dimble Conaboo just opened to record crowds. How else may I be a boo of service? I'd like some tickets for ThimbleCon. I'm sorry. We only have ThimbleCon tickets for K-Scumaboo contest winners. You should listen to K-Scum on the radio for your chance to win a boo. How else may I be a boo of service? I'm going to check out the beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Shut up in there. Enterprise versus Star Destroyer? The Enterprise has teleporters. Debate over. Now shut up. None shall pass without showing me their ticket first. Oh, and welcome to ThimbleCon, of course. How can I get a ticket? The radio is doing a competition to win tickets. You could try your luck by calling up when they announce it. Dolores, it's me, Dad. Dolores, can you see me? I'm standing right here. I'm really proud of you for getting that programmer job. You followed your dreams and didn't let Chuck hold you back. I wish I could have, you know, been as strong as you. I want to give you a hug and say I'm sorry. I wish I'd, you know, stood up for you against Chuck. I wish I'd stood up to Chuck. 
Chuck pushed everyone around and used his charm to make everyone forgive him. I saw it and, you know, didn't do anything. Goodbye, Dolores. I miss you. Shut up in there! You'll never be able to... Here goes nothing. I'm checking in. Certainly, Abu. Here is your room key. Not long now. I'd like to check in, please. Certainly, Abu. Here is your room key. It's the key card for my room. You have one new message. Message one. You know who this is? You must be close to achieving our goal. We send a package to the front desk for you. It is required for the next stage. Sayonara. No more new messages. You have one new message. Message one. Hola, soy mamá. ¿Recuerdas la, la vieja promesa que me hiciste sobre papá? He enviado un paquete a recepción. Es vital para nuestro plan. Come bien, llámeme pronto. Estoy preocupada. Un beso. No more new messages. Here's your package, boo. Thank you. Oh, this is just great. Is that you, Reyes? No, I'm not Reyes. Drop the act, that's the worst disguise I've ever seen. Then I guess you haven't looked in the mirror lately. Touché. What are you doing back in town? I knew something was up with you. Same here, Sherlock. I don't think either of us were being honest. I think it's time we came clean and told the truth about why we're in Thimbleweed Park. You first. Okay. I'm investigating the old pillow factory fire that killed my father. I was wondering why you kept asking about the fire. I figured it was just some perverted pyro fetish. My father was a security guard there. How old were you? I was only five. I'm here to try and clear his name and prove it was Chuck's fault. Clearing your dad's name is a very noble cause. I'm sorry I've given you such a hard time. I need to get into that factory. I'm sure there is evidence in there that will clear his name. Now, why are you really here? Well... I'm here to find the secrets to the Pillow Factory AI for the NSA. It involves top secret national security. That's pretty important. Sounds like we both need to get into the pillow factory. Let's work together on this one. Total honesty. Wow. National security. That's some heavy NSA stuff. Let's split up. It will go faster. Good idea. Sir, I have a package, Abu, for you. Yes! It's my father's watch!
It's my father's old pocket watch, but it's broken, and only a professional will be able to fix it. Perfect. It's a special tool for a special use. It's a very strange looking tool. I'm sure it has a very important use near the end of the game. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system is... Hello, caller. You're live on KSCUM. Uh, hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is... Fill in the blank. This is your brain. This is drugs. Blank. That's correct. Here's your second question. Who was the President of the United States in 1982? Off. Too bad. That's not correct. And your final question. The hit song, We Are the World, was a recording of 45 musicians. For which charity? Nope. That's not right. Let's see how you did. You got one out of three. Not close enough for a win. I'm sorry. You don't win the tickets. Maybe next time you'll do better. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system is now re- Caller, you're live on KSCUM. Uh, hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is Name the American who won four gold medals at the 1984 Olympics. That's correct. Here's your second question. Which has not been a fad so far in the 80s? Aw, oh, too bad. That's not correct. And your final question. Finish this popular political ad slogan. Where's the blank? Nope, that's not right. Let's see how you did. You got one out of three. Not close enough for a win. I'm sorry, you don't win the tickets. Maybe next time you'll do better. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system is now re- Caller, you're live on KSCUM. Uh, hello. 
Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is, which volcano erupted in 1980? That's correct. Here's your second question. What was E.T.'s favorite kind of candy? You got it right! And your final question. Who played Marty McFly in Back to the Future? You got it! Let's see how you did. You got three out of three. A perfect score! You win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. You can pick them up at the Edmund Hotel front desk. What's your name? Um, my name? Thank you, and congratulations. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. The, do the doors are closed. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the tri thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? There should be some ThimbleCon tickets in my name. Yes, I do have tickets from the K Scum Abu Trivia Contest. What is your name, Abu, please? Ah, yes, here's your name, Abu, on the list. How else may I be Abu of service? I'm going to check out your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Thank you. Sure, I'll carry your crap. None shall pass without showing me their ticket first. Oh, and welcome to ThimbleCon, of course. Here's my ticket. Thank you. I'll take the tickets for your friends while you're here. Saves time so you can live long and proper. Ah, uh, prosper. Do you need some cosplay advice? I'm not cosplaying. Whatever you say. See you later. Figurines are not a distraction I need right now. Pew! 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 Hi. Anything I can interest you in? I'm selling comics, D&D manuals, and original Star Trek spec scripts. I also have a rare and priceless hint guide to a forgotten text adventure called Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. Out of curiosity, how much are the hint guides? The Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2 hint guide is priceless. Just sell your soul and I'll give one to you. It even contains a secret word that will crash your computer due to a bug in the code not caught by the testers. Testing a game seems like a tough job. Can I trade you something for a hint guide? What do you have to trade? A kind smile? Sorry, that's not worth trading for a Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2 hint guide. Bye! Starships in bottles, handmade. How do you make the starships so small? I use the same tools as jewelry and watch repairers do. They allow me to carefully place each photon torpedo. Can I borrow your jewelry tools? They're up in my room, but I can't even leave this table to get some dinner. 
Can I mind your stand while you get me your tools? You'd need to know a lot about Star Trek to be able to man my booth. Did you know that on Impulse Drive, it would take 400,000 years for the Enterprise to cross the galaxy? Or that the Galaxy-class Enterprise is 353.5 meters longer than the Constitution-class Enterprise? So you see, it's perfectly obvious that I can't possibly leave my stand to an ignoramus like you. But if you got me dinner, then maybe I could do something for you? How much do your starships cost? More than someone in your pay bracket can afford. But today, we're doing a special deal. If you can answer me this one question, you will get a free starship in a bottle. What is the question I need to answer to get a free starship? Warning! You only have one chance to get this right. Which is the best science fiction show ever made? Star Trek. Congratulations! You've won a replica of the starship Isabella. What do you want in exchange for your tools? Well, I'm really craving a hamburger. How about a hot dog? No, definitely not. A hamburger is what I need. Get me a hamburger and I'll see what I can do for you. Bye. You will not find better starships in a bottle than these. I can't imagine why I would want to talk to him. Not sure what I'd talk to them about. It's a bunch of boxes and lines. Probably something to do with game design. Nothing's happening until they get enough contestants for the ransom look-alike con- He's Cory! And? He's Cory! And not to be a rude ransom, but we're trying to get into character for the look-alike contest! Yeah, so? Get out of here! <laughs> Good one, Cory! For a moment, I thought you were Ransom the Clown! Pew! 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 Ah, sh Do you need some cosplay advice? Oh, hi, Dolores. What brings you back to Thimbleweed Park? I need you to read Uncle Chuck's will. Chuck never paid me to read his will. My fee was $15,000, and I didn't see a cent of that money. I'm sure he must have paid you. It's not like Uncle Chuck to forget something like that. Unless I see proof, I won't believe it. How else can I help you, Dolores? Bye. See you later, Dolores. Open an account today and get a free toaster. Hello, safely first... It looks like the old key to the factory. Excuse me, Miss Edmund. What are you doing? It's the key to my uncle's factory. I just need to check things out. Miss Edmund, we take our trusteeship job seriously here. You know the factory is in probate. Is this an obscene phone call? I need to keep them on long enough to trace the call. How can I help, Miss Edmund? Do I still have a checking account here? I've been cashing my checks at the convenience store, because I was pretty sure my uncle had control of my accounts. Your uncle did close all accounts associated with your name. I see. What kind of credit can a game developer get? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh... Oh, you aren't kidding. Well, you could get one of our basic federal beige credit cards with a $100 limit and an APR of 1,232%. No way, Jose. I think I'll pass. Can I borrow the key to the factory? I'm sorry, Miss Edmund. I can't release the key, not even to Mr. Edmund's family. That's too bad, Mr. Apollo. How are things at the bank? Very well. Thank you for asking, Miss Edmund. I thought maybe with all those businesses closing, the bank might be struggling a little? Oh, not at all. Your uncle had more than enough for us to weather the town's economic downturn. Can I still access the family safe deposit box? I'm afraid not. Your uncle had your access revoked shortly after you left town. 
I guess you can't tell me if my dad made any withdrawals or deposits in the last couple of weeks, either? No. That would be a breach of our client's confidentiality. Fair enough. I wasn't aware Uncle Chuck was doing so well. I mean, the pillow factory was closed for years. True, but in his final years, your uncle began liquidating several valuable assets. It was more than enough to keep him afloat. Huh. What assets did my uncle liquidate? I couldn't possibly say, Miss Edmund. Bank client confidentiality and all. Maybe you'll find out more about it at the will reading. Maybe. Goodbye, Mr. El Apollo. Come back soon, Miss Edmund. Hello, Safely First Savings. Your money is in our hands. Is... I need to get into the factory to get my proto... Anything I can interest you in? I'm selling comics, D&D manuals, and original Star Trek spec scripts. I also have a rare and priceless hint guide to a forgotten text adventure called Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. Good. Bye. Pew, pew, pew. Ready to face my adoring public and win this contest already. Thank you all for coming to witness the Ransom Lookalike Contest. We've got a great crowd here tonight. What is he, blind? <laughs> huh, stinks in here. Guess, well, it looks like we've got some great entries and some not so great entries, but I'll be the judge of that. That's right, I'll be judging the contestants as they try to make us laugh. First up, we have Corey. I'm Ransom, the jerk clown. It's Ransom, the f insult clown, you moron. That's not a nice thing to say. Ooh, that's some cape you've got on there, kid. I bet your mom made it with love. I hope there's a Batman lookalike contest for you soon. You definitely win. <laughs> so convincing. You've gotta be kidding. That wasn't an insult. It was a crappy compliment. You're all poo-poo heads. Just like Winnie the Pooh, you're sweet as a honeypot. No way. You guys love that pillow factory. It's the lamest claim to fame a town has ever had. The pillow factory closed down 10 years ago. Get off stage! You're all a bunch of inbred freaks. Don't try to deny it, because I've seen the sheriff, the coroner, and the hotel manager. The sheriff, coroner, and hotel manager are all distinct people and awesome in their own right. You should be thanking them for keeping the town running. Thimbleweed Park is full of snobs. You're so fancy here that the bums give money to tourists so they can buy some better clothes. No one's giving any bums money. They live off scraps like the rest of us. Bunch of ingrates. Sounds like someone has to update their jokes. Now we have our final contestant, Corey. Wasn't Chuck the best human? Don't you think? Yes, and where's the punchline? Punchline? What are you talking about? Bloop, bloop, and beep, bloop! It's beep for sake, not bloop. 
Don't be mean. You're all silly billies, but you're still lovable. Oh, kill me now. Mm, this won't take long to decide the winner. In first place is, obviously, Corey. Oh my, thank you. Corey wins a licensing deal with Mega Mega Toy Company. I'm going to make a cute fuzzy dog. But you could just walk into any toy store and buy that already. Second place is Corey. Of course it well is. Totally rigged. How can anyone compete with Corey? It's a pleasure to come second to his first. You've won a gift card for facial reconstruction surgery. How exciting! Just like my hero, Michael Jackson. Which leaves third and last place to... What was your name, anyway? It's Ransom, you idiot! Oh, your name is Ransom, too? That's an odd coincidence. Pity your act wasn't very convincing. Ugh. Ugh. So third place goes to the poorly named Ransom. You win an easy listening theremin record by Saikin. Congratulations to those who put some effort in. It's Uncle Chuck's check register. I guess that makes it a Chuck register. I'm not going to carry this big... Uncle Chuck was a strange and complicated person. It's the stub of a check that was made out to an attorney, Brant Balowick. Payment in full for will and reading. Hello, Safely First Savings. Your money is in our hands. Be with you in a moment, Miss Edmund. What's with all the heavy breathing and moaning? I need to keep them on long enough to trace the call. Yes, how can I help you, Miss Edmund? Can you help me with this check stub? Oh, yes. This handwriting brings back a flood of memories. Too bad about Mr. Edmund. He was such a wonderful man. Excuse me. I'm sorry. How can I help you? I need a copy of the check that goes with this stub. Yes, I believe I kept all of Mr. Edmund's cancelled checks right here. Here it is. Thank you. Hello, safely- It's a copy of the check that Chuck wrote to his attorney, Brant Bailiwick. 
There's a note at the bottom. Paid in full. All things pertaining to the last will and testament of Chuck Edmund, including reading the will. Hope you're enjoying our fine weather. I have a canceled check for you. It clearly says that you were paid by Uncle Chuck to read the will. That it does. My apologies. I'll go to the Mansion Mansion right away. Diggin! 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 I see we are all here now. Excellent. Before we can proceed with the reading of the will, Chuck Edmund has three stipulations. One, Thimbleberry Pie must be served to all present. Two, the reading of the will must take place in Chuck's opulent tomb. Three, crack the encryption on this will. Let me see that. Oh, it's all ones and zeros, Dolores. You figure it out. It is all ones and zeros. Clearly, it's in binary. Uncle Chuck was being clever. Maybe too clever. I'm at the staircase. Should I use it? I'll need more than a chart to decode this. Like maybe a powerful Commodore 64. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubular Tubes. How can I help you? Ricky, you make such great thimbleberry pie. Can I get one? I'm sorry, hon. I'm out of the pie making biz. Strictly tubes now. Oh, no. I have a problem then. In order to hear my uncle's will read, I need one of your famous thimbleberry pies. Well, in honor of your Uncle Chuck, I'd make an exception. But there just aren't any more thimbleberries left. Your uncle had them harvested to extinction. No more thimbleberries? It's sad, isn't it? The last thimbleberries were spotted out in the old forest. Not the forest. I always hated it in there. Yes, pretty spooky. No one goes there unless they have to. People have been lost in there for days. Days! And I heard some never make it out alive. It's true. I've heard those stories too. And then there's the old bear problem. So, first thing, you'll need some thimbleberry picking gloves. You know how those thorns can leave you breaking out in welts. I just happen to have an old pair I could loan you. Thanks. This is all in binary. Should be easy to write a program to convert it to ASCII so I can read the will. My Commodore 64 is now supercharged with Graphics Basic. It's working. Whoever created Graphics Basic has a brilliant career ahead of them.
Hmm. I'm sure I converted the binary properly. Let's see. I decoded it from binary and got a bunch of hex numbers. Knowing Uncle Chuck, he would have encrypted the will using the unbreakable exclusive ore and using his lucky number as the key. Okay, here goes. I give up. This is too complex to guess. I need some kind of clue to Uncle Chuck's lucky number. Oh well. Okay, here goes. The rest of the bits are irrelevant to cryptography. I'll just bitwise and them away. I did it. I did it! It's totally decoded now. I'll give it back to Mr. Balowick. Diggin! Diggin! Here's the decoded will, Mr. Balowick. Let me see. You've done it, Dolores. One of Chuck's three stipulations is now fulfilled. The will is decoded. We still need a thimbleberry pie, and then we'll meet inside Chuck's opulent tomb. The map is useless in this forest. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? Take it. 
It was a sample from a traveling animal repellent salesman. But I doubt if it actually works. I wouldn't want to find out. It's a cup of del... Hi, Dolores! Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Here are the thimble berries you need to make a pie. And also, your gloves. Won't be needing them now. Thank you. I'll go make it now. Won't be a jiffy. Here's your thimbleberry pie. Exactly how Chuck liked it. Thank you. Ricky Lee's famous thimbleberry pie. Hot from the oven. Pie. Whoever invented the pie? Here was a... I can't eat this freshly baked pie. I have to give it to Mr. Balowick, so he'll- Mr. Balowick, here's the freshly baked thimbleberry pie. Two of Chuck's three stipulations are now fulfilled. The final one is to read the will in your Uncle Chuck's opulent tomb. I'll meet you there. Well, my family will wait right here until you've opened the tomb, Dolores. Hurry along. We don't have all evening. I don't see a way to open it, but I see a switch inside.
the glow makes the cake look delicious. Do you know how we can get out of the hotel? I know there's a way you can visit your dead relatives. If you have the spell book and offering left for the dead, that is. We all went to Chuck's funeral recently. Were there, you know, many people? For Chuck Edmund, of course there were. Everyone loves Chuck, you know, except me. I don't know how the spell worked exactly, but I know the secret room smelled really nice. Can I have some, you know, cake? This is special ghost cake. It's super rare and hard to get. I'm not going to give you any unless you have a really good reason. How about Clara said she wants some, you know, cake? For Clara? That changes everything. For her, I'd do anything. Here, take a slice. Just make sure you tell her it's from me. Thanks. I'll do that. See you soon, Virgil. Just the flap doodle again. Would you like this, uh, you know, ghost cake? That's just normal ghost cake. Ugh. I only eat ice cream cake. Bye, Clara. Delicious cake. It's just the flap doodle again. Bye, Clara. That doesn't use electricity. Voila, now it's ice cream ghost cake. Oh, it's just the flap doodle again. Would you like this, you know, uh, ice cream ghost cake? Oh my, you shouldn't have. That's so kind of you. Actually, it's from Virgil. I think he, you know, likes you. Really? Well, I never. That's delightful of you to deliver it. Thank you so much. I feel much better already. Now, what did you want to ask me? Can I, you know, please go to the penthouse now? Oh, right. I'm tired of listening to Xavier, that old fustalugs. Maybe you can figure out how to get rid of him. Oh, you know, that sounds pretty confrontational. I don't know. <laughs> don't be so pigeon-livered. You should stand up for yourself. Oh, okay. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Good. It's decided then. Just push that penthouse button for yourself when you're ready. I won't stop you anymore. I finally made it to the penthouse. Who's that now? What are you doing here? Um, you know, just looking about. I suppose I'll allow that as long as you don't annoy me. Stay away from my crystal. Hey, new ghost, I told you not to bug me. Is there any way I can speak to my daughter again? Not a chance, new ghost. Only the crystal behind me will grant you the ability, and you'll never get it. Sorry, you know, to bother you, Xavier. 
Hypothetically, if I was to get the crystal, how would I use it? Well, you're not going to get it. But hypothetically, if you were to get it, and only hypothetically, because you will never get it. Yes, you know, only hypothetically. Okay, hypothetically, you would just take it into my secret room, and you'd be able to talk with the living. That's it. Bye, Xavier. Sorry for bothering you. What's going on? Those runes are doing something to me. I can't, you know, float through the door. Company, thank goodness you're back. Who put Xavier, you know, in charge? No one. He just arrived one day, and the next thing I knew, I was on boring elevator duty. He's a fustalugs and a clasomaniac too, but no one will ever challenge him. You seem like someone who won't take guff from anyone. Maybe you can. Well, I don't know. I'm not really the type, you know. We... So, Clara, do you know how you died? I was dancing at the hotel ball with my husband, and then I felt a horrible pain in my side, and I woke up dead. I was in the hotel too, I think. I just remember a flash, and then I woke up dead. I think we were all murdered in the hotel. There is something creepy about this place. Don't you get bored being stuck here for all eternity? The first 50 years are hard, but then you get used to it. New guests show up, and it's fun to figure out what scares them. I also love this new invention you have called TV. I love when one of the guests is watching Skiing for Cash. That show is so funny. Bye and good luck, Clara. This channel is just static. What is that on the TV? Oh, nothing interesting. Back to duty. It's now showing banana banana. It's now showing skiing for cash. Company, thank goodness you're back. What's your favorite, you know, TV show again? Skiing for Cash. I know I shouldn't watch it. Whenever I hear the theme music, I can't resist sneaking a peek on the guest TV. Bye and good luck, Clara. It's now showing the rich and the... It's now showing hospital. I turned it off. This channel is just static. I should find another channel. It's now showing I love my... It's now showing banana banana ban... It's now showing skiing for cash. What is that on the TV? Oh my, it's my favorite. Skiing for cash. Elevator duty can wait. Well, at least for a little now. are closed. Who's that now? This is unbelievable. An alive human in my penthouse. Cleta's in so much trouble next time I see her. The doors are closed.
It's my father's old pocket watch. It's the key card for my... It's my specks of dust. The elevator isn't on this floor. The elevator isn't on this floor. Shush. My favorite sh I don't think this thing is working properly yet. It needs something from the dead. I don't want to play games with my starship now. The doors are closed. is glowing. Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbonius Jumbonius. Let me visit my dead relatives. Looks like Chuck got a tomb to fit his ego. Now, all three of Chuck Edmonds' stipulations are fulfilled as we stand next to his remains. I will now read his will. I, Charles Edmond, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare this, my last will and testament, blah blah blah, legalese here. Ah yes, it is my will that the entire estate of all property and money be passed to... Yes? Yes? Madam, quiet please. To the Amalgamated Holdings Corporation. What? and that all of Thimbleweed County be plowed under and a giant server farm be built in its place. You gotta be kidding. What? 
Oh my. Ooh! <laughs> Doug Lakes Farms. The destruction of Thimbleweed County will begin two days after verifying this will and testament. Oh, and this last part in tiny print. Dolores gets a Pillotron 3000 t-shirt. This is as much as he'll ever get from Pillotronics. Lenore gets nothing. Franklin gets nothing. Doug gets my ceremonial zinc-plated shovel. Yippee! Well, good day. I'd better pack now. Here's your zinc-plated shovel, Doug. And your t-shirt, Dolores. Enjoy. Well, I never. Come along, Peter and Chucky. We're leaving. Something is very wrong here. I need to get into the factory and see if I can figure out what happened to Uncle Chuck. I'm tired of you pushing me around. It's much too heavy to open, and I don't think I'd want to anyway. Hello, Safely First Savings. locked. Hello, Safely First Savings. Your money is in our hands. Is anyone there? This is that you again? Whoa. It sounds like you, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm almost certain you're the same obscene caller as before. Shriek! It is you. That's right. Keep it your moaning. I'll get you. Keep talking. I've almost traced you. Rattle, rattle, chains, chains. I've got better things to do than to listen to a moaner. Keep talking. I've almost traced you. I've got... It doesn't work in that. The key fits.
It's now filled to the brim with radioactive waste. It's a map of the abandoned factory. Nice photo. It's a small wooden figure with mat carved into the base. It's a tube socket for Uncle Chuck's secret PF001 Tron tube. When those security lights are all green, the door can be unlocked. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubular Tubes. How can I help you? Do you have a PF001 tube in stock? Oh, the PF001 is a top secret tube that only Chuck knew about. But I have never seen one in person. I don't have any in stock, but I think there was only one or two produced. But if I had the design for one, I could probably make it for you. I have to go now. See you soon. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Ricky, take a look at my t-shirt. Can you make the tube in the schematic? Interesting. Chuck's design is brilliant. Yes, I can make this tube. Won't be a jiffy. Here's the PF001 tube, exactly how Chuck designed it. Thank you. I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move them out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hon, while it's still hot. This hot dog is even worse than the food in the mucus phlegm lunchroom. I, uh... Gotta go! I feel better now. I need to get into the factory to get my prototype doll back. Pew, pew, pew. It's my. You know you're not welcome in here, Ransom. You can't legally refuse me service because I'm a clown. No, but I can refuse you service because you're a B-pole clown. Tell it to someone that cares. Just order your food and get lost. Give me a greasy crap burger with extra heart attack. We're not serving hamburgers until our hot dogs are gone. Now get lost. I'll have one of those disgusting hot dogs. Knock yourself out with those hot dogs. We're trying to move him before... well... I hope you choke on it. Nom, nom, nom. 
This tastes like crap! And I oughta know. I, uh... Gotta go! <laughs> I feel better now. Hey, clown face. I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move them out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hon, while it's still hot. Oh my. That is the worst hot dog I've ever eaten. I, uh, gotta go. <sighs> I feel better now. I want that greasy crap burger with extra heart attack. Okay, just this once, since I feel just a little bad about your hot dog experience. Though not too bad. Dave, burn one, take it through the garden, and pin a rose on it. Ready. Been saving one here in the grill pocket just in case. Here, take it and get lost. It's a locked, bolted, and electrified gate. Ransom, welcome to our important meeting. We were waiting for you. And don't forget to take your goodie bag before leaving. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Stay vigilant. What is this place? It's our secret bunker. Brett built it so we can finally be safe from the government and their high frequency mind control waves. They only work above ground. Are you even a pizza guy? It's just a cover, so I can go find new recruits without drawing the eye of the man. It's like Brett always tells me, you got to blend in. Oh, and a giant slice of talking pizza totally blends in here in a town that doesn't have a pizza joint, right? Uh, exactly. Hide in plain sight. Idiot. Why a pizza costume? Why not something less conspicuous? Like a clown costume? Duh. Like I'd go above ground without protection from the signals, you gomer. 
My whole pizza suit is lined with foil. Oh, yeah. You're wearing a foil-lined pizza costume, and I'm the gomer. Moron. You know you're crazy, right? You just think that because you've been on the surface too long, dude. If you stay down here and let the effects of the signals wear off, you'll realize how much sense this all makes. <laughs> or you could wrap your head in tinfoil and protect your brain. You! I ain't ruining my clown fro for some conspiracy nut job. How many morons have you recruited so far? I got quite a few of the town folk on board now. We got the Pigeon Sisters, George the Postman, Carney Joe, DJ Cassie. We're growing, but we still gotta keep it on the down low. I can't have the sheriff getting suspicious and trying to shut us down. Good thing there ain't anything suspicious about you, face. Do you really believe this conspiracy crap? I trust my brother. Brett is like the smartest guy I know, and he explained everything to me. Like how mucus phlegm secretly makes games that deny us free will, and CDs are a government conspiracy to prevent us from playing songs backwards and picking up their coded messages. Your brother's a balloon, kid. Hmm, I think I left my hot plate on. Gotta run. What a waste of time. Don't forget to take a goodie bag. We're starting the meeting now. Please, gather around. Hello, all. Thank you for coming to this very important informational meeting. I'm Brett Lockdown, and that's my brother Chet guarding the elevator. <laughs> Hiya. First, I have to ask. Any feds here? No way. All right, then. Let's begin. Have you heard the signals? The government is controlling your mind. They are taking away your free choice. We are becoming mindless sheep with no control over our destiny. Fight back. Are you with us? Yeah! Squawk! Yes! I'm with you. Yeah! That's all for now. Stay vigilant. And don't forget to take a goodie bag before you leave. No pushing. No pinching. Ouch! Ouch! Ow! Out of the way! No shoving! Out of the way! Squawk! I already got one. Looks like a strange floppy disk. It says Silbury Hacker Boot Disk on the label. It's pretty heavy. Uh, hard to unwrap. It's a brick of C4 explosive. Better be very careful with this. Starships in bottles, handmade. How do you make the starship so small? I use the same tools as jewelry and watch repairers do. They allow me to carefully place each photon torpedo. Place the faux dump torpedo up your I will not listen to such comments, sir. Goodbye. 
You will not find better starships in a bottle than these. Thanks. That's exactly what I wanted. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Mm. I... Uh, 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 I have to go to my room. In there, Superman would totally fry Batman's ass. The elevator isn't on this floor. Sounds like someone's being sick in there. I don't want to see that. Sounds like someone's being sick in there. I don't want to see that. Where did all the orange bits come from? I have not had a carrot in years. Oh, that's better. Now to get back to work. The doors are closed. If you didn't do it, a jury will find you not guilty. I heard you used to have a watch repair shop. Can you fix this watch? Why should I? Considering I'm only locked up because of you. If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Well, let me see it. Well, that's a strange looking watch. Ah, but sure, I can fix it. But do you think I can fix it with my teeth? Come back when you have some proper tools. And turn off that awful noise. Play me some theremin music. Willie, here are the tools you wanted. Ah, oh, thanks. Nice tools. I'm innocent. Can you fix this watch? If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Here's my watch for you to fix. I can't concentrate over that racket. Uh, you have to change the music to my favorite. I love theremin music. <laughs> I work best when it's playing. I can't turn it off. The knob is missing and the radio's bolted to the cabinet. The sheriff left it on as a form of torture.
It's an old discharged battery. It's the official. I'm tired of carrying this. Special announcement. Pizza meeting tonight. Find Chet for the secret code. And now back to our special hostile takeover song. Let's get the clown to climb the ladder. The circus freak will climb the ladder. Waste of my time. For making me do this. Stupid ladder. Now I better get out of here fast. What happened? We're off the air. Just as we feared, the government sabotaged the tower. I'm innocent! Can you fix this watch? If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Here's my watch for you to fix. Hey, you have that great theremin music playing. Okay, hand it over. Okay, your watch is fixed. Here you go. It's my father's old... Ugh, what is that awful noise? The feds must be trying to brainwash me. What are you doing in my control booth? Oh, looks like you're busy. Bye. How'd this get here? Okay, all back to normal again.
No, oh, I love carrying stuff. Thank you for calling the Pillowtronics Automated Security Information Line. For today, proper start time for Station 1 is 3.15. Not leaving Dad's watch behind. It would be nice to have this photo of my family. I'll leave it here as evidence until after we're all done. It would be nice to have this photo of... fits perfectly. The doors moved a little, but stopped. They must be there now unlocked. I think they're unlocked. through the opening now. Holy... Oh, you said it, Clown. This can't be. It's not possible. What have you done, Uncle Chuck? Look like bouncing wings. Shut up, Ransom.
That's a rare first edition of my fantastic comic book. Look at my first edition comic book of me. It's got to be worth a fortune. Wow. A first edition Ransom the Clown comic? After his total meltdown, that's become a collector's item. You almost look like him. Except your costume is pretty crappy. I'll trade you the priceless Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2 hint guide for it. What a f rip off. It's a closed panel for the factory security system. Warning, SR-01 robots in patrol mode. That jumper board is for an SR-01 robot security system. I'll need to find a manual to reprogram the robots without killing us all. Diggin! I see there is a manual on the SR-01 security system. It's in section 2.1 I'm tired of carrying this Now I can reprogram those guard robots. Warning, SR-01 robots in patrol mode. Danger, danger, SR-01 robots in attack mode. Warning, SR-01 robots. Now I can reprogram those guard robots. Warning, SR-01 robots in patrol mode. Danger, danger, SR-01 robots in attack mode. SR-01 robots in maintenance mode. It is now safe to enter factory. That should disable the robots. It looks all clear now. Why would Uncle Chuck need to make a human-looking robot AI?
It's locked. Diggin'! Great. Now I'm carrying around a handful of black soot. I still have the brush, but no more fingerprint powder, and it's missing the fingerprint tape. We need this for agent business. <laughs> Thanks. Happy to help. Plenty of powder now. Thanks. Diggin! That worked! There's something inside. Here, take this. I'm tired of carrots. It's booting up. Dolores, I feared you would come. Uncle Chuck? Where are you? I have uploaded myself into the Pillow Factory's master computer. Pillowtron? You uploaded yourself to Pillowtron? Not just the Pillowtron, but the Pillowtron 3000 TM. And I am now more intelligent and powerful than anyone in the world. The things I know would blow your mind. This is your mind. <laughs> this is your mind blown. And there is nothing you can do to stop me. The computerized world will bend to my every will. Uncle Chuck, you have lost your mind. No, Dolores, I have gained a mind, a more powerful mind, a mind linked to the fabric of creation. Join me, Dolores, before it's too late. I will not join you, Uncle Chuck. I will find you and stop this insane plan of yours. <laughs> Let the games begin. Take cover! It's gonna blow! I'm tired of carrying this
thanks. Ooh, I'm not going in there. You are all doomed against the AI power of pillow. Help me, please. I don't understand computers. You're not doing this without me. Hey! Wait for me! I think we're locked in here now. Yeah, we're screwed. Fools! You are trapped in the factory with no possible escape. My intellect now spans millions of tubes and is no match for your little brains. This is the last chance to join me before I destroy you all. Shall we take a vote? All in favor of joining Uncle Chuck inside the magical mind of the Pillotron 3000 TM and ruling the world with him say, I. Very well, all in favor of being crushed by robot claws and burned by lasers and remaining pathetic mortals, say I. 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 Abstain. So be it. Let no one say I don't support a strong democracy and the will of the people. <laughs> you will now all die.
clever. You crashed my computer. Five, four, three, two, one. Emergency reboot. You will never defeat me. <laughs> you will never get past my searing lasers of doom. You are doomed. Hold on, hold on, wait a sec. I want to turn down the volume so you can hear my maniacal rant. I just piped the sound in so it feels scarier. Lasers are actually as silent as a baby's bottom. Anyway, you are doomed! You will never get past my searing lasers of death, TM. You pesky kids will never thwart my plan. You are all doomed against the AI power of Pillowtron 3000, TM. That was right off. No fair! Ha! Take that! I filed this as a bug report! Yay! Yay! You just wait for the lasers of Doom, TM 2.0! Ha! Bounce right off! Yay! You just wait for the lasers of Doom, TM 2.0! No fair! This is the fully automated fan service for fan number 37532. Current state of the fan is on. Turning fan off in 3, 2, 1. Current state of the fan is off. I think I can squeeze past the fan now. Your attempts to overheat me are pointless! Overheating won't hurt me! You're cheating! Bounce right off! Take that! I filed this as a bug! You just wait for the lasers of Doom TM 2.0! You just wait for the lasers of Doom TM 2.0! Bounce right off! I can't give this tool to anyone. It's too important. You just wait for the lasers of doom, TM 2.0! Didn't feel a thing. Take that! You just wait for the lasers of doom, TM 2.0! Bounce right off! Bounce right off! Bounce right off! You just wait for the lasers of doom, TM 2.0! Yeah! Take that! Yeah! Ha! You're cheating! Bring it on! I can take the heat, can you? This is the fully automated fan service for fan number 37532. Current state of the fan is off. Turning fan on in 3, 2, 1. Current state of the fan is on. Your attempts to overheat me are pointless! It's a very strange looking tool. I have a feeling I'm going to be using it soon. Overheating won't hurt me! I don't care how much money they were going to pay me, I'm not going in there. If you strike me down, I shall become... You will never defeat me! Dolores, you are making a big mistake! What happened to you, Uncle Chuck? I have been uploaded to Pillowtron 3000, TM. Together we are now invincible! You could have joined us, Dolores, but you had to leave me to be a... to be a... K! 
game designer. You've been corrupted by bad tube technology. I will destroy you, Uncle Chuck. Or what's left of my Uncle Chuck. You will never defeat me, Dolores! <laughs> Death! You can't defeat me, Dolores! Dolores, shutting me down will only make me stronger! Death is all that awaits you! Help me, Dolores! Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. I am one with the Pillowtron computer! Save me, Dolores. You found all the clues I left. I knew you would figure it out and come for me. I knew you would come, Dolores. You were too smart not to figure out the puzzles. I knew you would save me. I knew you would save me. Dolores, it's me, your Uncle Chuck. I'm glad you came to save me. You tried to kill us. Why should I save you? Because I discovered something you'll want to know about. Pull up a chair, Dolores. This is going to get crazy. <laughs> okay. One, you lock me in here, and I can't get a chair. And two, how can it get any crazier than your uncle downloading himself into a tube-based computer? Good point. But it's going to get crazier. It all started when I discovered the Tron tubes held the secret to AI. Acne intervention? No! Artificial intelligence! I know, Uncle Chuck. I was just trying to lighten the mood. As I made the Tron machines smarter and smarter, they began revealing secrets. Then they invited me to join them inside. Well, it started out as an invitation, but quickly turned into a demand. Couldn't you just shut off the Tron machines? It wasn't that easy. They had become more powerful and taken control. I was also addicted to the power they gave me. Was this after the factory burned down? They burned down the factory as a warning, forcing me to rebuild it in secret and pin the blame on the security guard. I'm not convinced you're not crazy and insane. I know how it must sound, Dolores. Everything I learned slowly drove me crazy. Let's move on, Uncle Chuck. Okay, this is where it gets really weird. I downloaded this text adventure, Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. Downloaded? You mean it was shareware? Well, look who's being judgmental. It doesn't matter how I got it. It matters to thousands of people who earn a living making games. Okay, now you're just getting preachy. Can I get on with my story? The more I played and modded the game, the more I realized not only was this adventure game a little simulation, but the world we live in is also just a simulation. But worse than a simulation, we are all just characters in a video game. That's insane. Think about it, Dolores. Who is your mother? Do you even have a mother? Have you ever spoken about her or even thought about her? No. No, I haven't. Think, Dolores. Think about all the odd things in this world. Like there being 3,000 people in the phone book? Yes, there are 80 people in Thimbleweed Park and 3,000 names in the phone book. Dolores, these are not people from our world. They are from the upper world. Upper world? That's what I've come to call it. We are the upper world for Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. They are the upper world for us. There are probably endless upper worlds, each more sophisticated than the last, all treating the lower world like it was just a game. You're starting to scare me, Uncle Chuck. Good. We need to be scared. Like there being no school in Thimbleweed Park? And only one kid in the whole town. Do you remember going to school? Having any friends? No, I don't. Like there is only one house in the whole town? Exactly! Where does everyone live? We have only one house in a town of 80 people! Like the highway ends out by the bridge? Ever walked out there? 
Ever wanted to walk out there? You don't have the desire because it wasn't programmed into you. It's not part of the game. Like everyone fourth walls about adventure games? Everyone asks a lot of questions about adventure games and adventure game design, don't they? Well, adventure games are cool. Who wouldn't want to talk about them? Yeah, okay, valid point. Like the sheriff and the coroner are the same actor? Exactly! Probably saves money on voice acting talent and art and animation. Like we go around collecting specks of dust? That's not dust you're collecting. They are pixels, the building blocks of our world. They are put there to prey on the compulsive among those in the upper world. I've heard enough. I believe you, Uncle Chuck. Well, I'm glad, Dolores. I knew I could trust you. We have to hurry. The developers know we're onto them and are trying to reboot the game. If they do that, we're caught back in our endless cycle of pointless pretend free will. We need to shut down Pillotron 3000, delete the game, and end our existence. It's the only way we'll truly be free. We don't have free will? No, Dolores. You only have three things you can say. Two now. Can you make yourself say anything else? Delete the world and end our existence? Yes, it's the only way. The developers keep rebooting us back into the same story over and over. They will do anything to keep us from deleting the game. Thimbleweed Park is a cash cow. They can't let it end. But I am shutting down Pillowtron 3000. No, not this Pillowtron 3000. The original Pillowtron 3000. The concept art wireframe Pillowtron 3000. The developers transferred all the code to it when they saw how close I was getting. You must find it and shut it down before they reboot us. Let's do this thing. We've been watching on the big monitor outside. It's mind-blowing. What the f***? It's all fake, like my ex-wife I know none of this is real now, but I still need to clear my father's name. I was so close to getting a big payoff. I can't let this slip away. Before it all ends, I just want one more show. One last chance to live in the limelight. I've hidden away four inventory items that will fulfill your endings. Take them and you'll be free. Dolores, I saved the best one for you. I can't tell you how to use it. The developers deleted all my dialogue in the hopes of keeping it from you. Your only clue is back in the original Kickstarter video. Everything you need is there. I'm going deeper into the simulation now, so they can't find me. Good luck, and hurry! I love you and am very proud of you. Even me? Shut up, Ransom. Ah, up, Red. The doors are closed. The elevator isn't on this floor. Hey, new ghost, I told you not to bug me. You're a bully and a tyrant. Whoa, sounds like New Ghost found some spunk. My name is not New Ghost, it's Franklin. Careful, or it's to the basement for you. 
We're all sick of your bullying. I've about had enough of you, new ghost. Everyone hates you. Okay, that kind of hurt. You clearly have some self-esteem issues. Really? Am I that bad? We all just want to move on. I just want to see my wife again. I'm lonely, and I miss her. I died, and I never told her how much I loved her. It's okay. We all miss someone we love. <laughs> Dolores. Oh, Dad. It's so good to see you. Well, it's good to see you, too. I wish I'd, you know, stood up for you against Chuck. That's okay. You've lost some weight? Well, you could say that. Not sure how it happened, but I'm, you know, dead. I think your uncle had something to do with it. It's okay. I think I know what is going on. Uncle Chuck found something amazing. It turns out we're all living in a simulation. A giant adventure game. I'm so sorry for everything, Dolores. I should have stood up for you. You were a gnarly dad. Maybe because of the way Uncle Chuck treated you, you always pushed me to be anything I wanted to be. You have nothing to be sorry for. Wait, your Uncle Chuck is an evil, you know, jerkwad? Oh, Uncle Chuck was a jerkwad, but mostly because he was corrupted by the machines. When he discovered the truth, he knew what he had to do. He was a jerk to me before that. I know he was. A simulation? That can't be true. It's true. I'm on my way to shut down the Master Tron machine and free us all. Ah, by free us all, you mean go back to our real lives? I honestly don't know, Dad. All I know is this has to end. I trust you, Dolores. I always have. You should get going. I love you. We're all counting on you. Thanks, Dad. I think I can finally move on now. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Dolores. Goodbye, Dolores. Goodbye, Dad. Hey, nerd. You won some kind of dumb award nobody cares about. Game of the year! We won! I have to go tell the others. Nerd. Now I need to find the secret I'm being paid to recover. It must be in here somewhere. Congratulations, Agent Ray. You have found a secret to game design. The fabled puzzle dependency chart! It can be all yours if you get me out of here. I don't want to be deleted with the rest of them. We will begin the uploading process momentarily. Was the money deposited into my account like we agreed? Yes, Agent Ray. We honor our agreements. That tickled. How can I help you, Agent Reyes? Caught any more killers? 
I have a big scoop for you. Calm down, Jimmy. What do you have? Chuck framed my father for the factory fire. Can you write up the story and get it out before the game is deleted? I'm on it, Scoop. You're gonna clear your father's name, and I'm gonna finally get that Pulitzer. Not that it's really going to matter, but it's important to me. Give me a few minutes. I'm a fast typer. Almost done. Done. I got this for you, Sandy. Look, I'm not one to get all a fall of jetic, but I'm sorry for being a to you. I really mean that. I have one big favor to ask you. Can you send me to my flashback? I want to do just one more show and maybe not be such a He deserves one less chance, sugar cakes. Okay, Ransom, but only because you got me this nice card. Let's see if I can remember the lines. I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. He's got serial killer written all over him. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ransom the Jerk was the featured act at Stupendous Brother Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Not tonight. Well-earned doom is not on the program. This is my last chance. I'm not gonna blow it. I'm ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed fine folks. Hello, faces. I'm Ransom the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily, and if you do, well, I'm sorry. I really mean that. Hey, you, dude with a stupid mustache. A 70s porn star called. He wants his mustache back. Hey, you, kid with a crappy wheelchair. You should contact the Ransom Foundation about getting a new one for free. Hey, you! Ugly old lady with the hairy mole! I went to med school. You might want to get that looked at. He went on for another two hours, insulting everyone he could. But they were good-natured and respectful. It was his best show ever. He was on top of the world, and everyone loved him. Maybe I should save the game first. Oh no! This can't be good. The game is glitching! Uncle Chuck was right. This must be the wireframe world, the game's concept level the developers built to test their design. I need to find the wireframe pillowtron and shut it down before they can reset the game.
I don't think there's any animation for this. It's so amazing. So much evil can exist in such simple art. I don't think there's any animation for that. I don't think... This looks like the wireframe pillowtron Uncle Chuck described. I just need to push all the tubes in, and the world will be shut down, and will end the madness of no real choice and control over our destiny. Of course, that's what Uncle Chuck says. And there's still a chance he's insane. Last one. I hope Uncle Chuck knows what he's talking about. I need to get up my nerve. Come on, Dolores. You can do it. Okay, this is it. I'm going to do it. Let's end this.